Kenny Powers. <laughs> you ever seen you ever seen he's found it down? <laughs> I don't think you need any more encouragement 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 because I know you've just started recording in dirty <laughs> I wanted to see what everybody had to say though. About your hair. It needs some product in there. I mean, I think that would look really kind of sleek, don't you? Yeah, maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> I have no earthly idea what any of y'all. Some gel on the top to get the top just to be like hard and then the back to leave flowing like that. <laughs> All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Appalachian Podcast. Straight from the Timcast IRL Studios. In the moonshine capital of the world, Tim Gast RL comes on. I think every night. I should probably look it up. Eight o'clock, I think, or nine o'clock. One of the two. You can find it on YouTube. The live stream. Uh, no competition with us. Phenomenal show. Great guests every week. Gives a really good uh, perspective. Like we, I get a lot of my talking points from listen. Like that's where I get most of my news because they're they're pretty reliable and they're not right or left. I mean, they're pretty much giving it from just, Hey, here's the news. So, but, but I like the guests he has on there and they do, you know, the, the, the topical stuff and, uh, the, each day, the topical news event of the day, and they have really interesting guests that come on and it's not like Joe Rogan. So Joe Rogan, you sit down one-on-one -on -one and you talk about, you know, you'll talk about you and you'll talk about stuff. What's going on with Tim cast. It's you're an interesting person. You talk a very little bit about you and what you do, but for the most part, you're going to give your opinion on the topical news events of the day. Yeah, so it's an it's an opinion, which is great. Absolutely, it's, and it's great to listen to. And and you know, as we mentioned on last week's show, Tim Cast uh, gave us a favorable uh, donation a few weeks ago, and uh, you know, didn't ask anything in return. But I thought uh, the least I could do was at least for the next year or so, unless somebody comes in and drops ten grand right on us, and I don't think he would have a problem because I'd probably turn around and throw a grand right back at him and what he's doing because that's what you do. You take care of the people who take care of you. So yes, check that out. Tim cast RL. You, I mean, you can find them on Facebook, Instagram, uh, X, Twitter, whatever. I mean, and, and then of course they'll lead you to all their shows. And I think timcast.com is a website. Uh, we're a subscriber over there because, you know, I stand dollars a month and I believe in what they're doing. You know, I kind of want, you know, for the same reason, I want people to subscribe to us at patreon.com slash get on tap. I want them to subscribe there because they believe in us. You know, it, the content that might be there, it might not be there. We're working really hard on that. We're, we're a couple of dads Billy, in a struggling Billy, world. Billy. But if you believe in what we're doing and what we can accomplish, that extra little bit helps. That was so slick and smooth. That was a very professional. Did you see that slide and change of pace? Yeah. Get on tap dot com slash Patreon. Oh, man. That was <laughs> Patreon.com slash get on uh, tap. And what I'm trying to say is by going or by going to, uh, uh uh, Venmo or Cash App, both uh, at Get On Tap or WB Riddle at, at PayPal.com. Just one time donations here, and that stuff goes right back in to giving back to our community. You know, I, we got this big blessing from Tim Cast, and, you know, I could have sit there and, and, and probably Simon would have had no earthly idea that happened because it happened on Twitter. I could have told nobody else, pocketed the money when I, what am I, well, Kick Simon a little bit back for all his hard work. I'm going to kick, uh, you know, a little bit to Spike Cohen's nonprofit. You are the power, by the way. Go check them out. Why? Because Spike came and gave us his time. And we never told anybody about this. Uh, but, but I think now is a good show to tell them. Um, you know, Spike typically charges about $2,000 to $2,500 for speaking engagements. And why not? I mean, he won the bronze medal in the last election for vice president. He's got a lot of great things to say. He's a very popular individual. A lot of people... Uh, want his time and want to hear what he's got to say. And Spike came here and the only thing they asked for us to cover was his room and board and his airfare, which was covered by great people like uh, uh, Isaiah Rickman with uh, Rickman Inc., Amos Denton with his custom woodworking and farming up there, uh, you know, Pruitt Brothers Construction, Layman's Electric and Plumbing, uh, Friends, Chip Slate being Libertarian, everybody, uh, Melvin's Farm to Fork. Huge support, buddies, barbecue, safe side tactical. All those people chipped in, and made that event happen. Uh, they they paid for the airfare and for the for and Brian down at Rocky Mount Burger Company owns the early in. I'm pretty sure he set them up in the early in for the weekend. That was a huge deal from Brian. Huge deal, yeah, absolutely. I mean, all these people really made that possible. And Spike never charged a normally twenty. Like I said, twenty five foot. 
nothing. He was like, man, you said Canon, you had us. We're going to waive that fee to come up. You know, we've made a really great relationship off of that. Now we're back and forth with those guys. Now we're thinking about going up to D.C. in December or February and sitting down, uh, you know, with them again. I mean, uh, so I'm going to throw a little bit of money their way. I'm going to throw, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of that blessing back towards Spike and his nonprofit. You are the power because they're going around and this podcast is going to really touch on a lot of this and why it's important. But he's going around to small towns, rural communities, uh, city councils, town councils, and saying, hey, this is where you make the difference. This is where get get local people elected that that have good moral. I'm like, you know what? I would rather give my money to somebody working on the local level than the national level because let's be honest, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to give a little bit there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to spread it around a little bit, and I'm going to put some back in the show. But, uh, you know, I, I could have pocketed all that. I want to make sure Simon gets taken care of. I want to make sure the people who Bless you, baby. And, and that and that is how I want everybody out here to live. Like take care of your neighbor, take care of the people who no matter just the smallest or biggest of gestures will go an awful long way. C- cash only. I, I don't involve the IRS in any <laughs> no. transactions whatsoever. No, don't you worry about that. We're <laughs> oh, sorry, FBI Van Seven. I know you're listening. Yeah, well, y'all can come here out here go. and make a deal of it and try and you know, follow all the, but you'll be wasting your time. So I'm, <laughs> I think the video, I think video equipment is now next big leap. I think so too. Um, I think that's, that's the jump I'm going to take with the money is I'm going to invest it into some, some cameras for in here. I, I wish I knew somebody who could really like set up and show us how to do the setup. Cause we've got this camera. Tara's got $700. It's a few years old, but I bet the video one, it's great. And you could probably set up a couple cell phones and corners. Honestly, I can help you out with that and capture what we need without spending a lot of money. We'll have a chat with Tyler. We should. Yeah. Tyler Stewart. Let's, let's, let's bring in all the minds. I don't even think, I think Stewart probably knows probably a little bit more than Tyler does on that front. Yeah. Tyler as a promoter, he's got the guy. Now he could put us in touch with the guys over there who do their thing. But honestly, you could probably with the cell phones, how they are now you could set them up in corners and the the, the trick in, in all of that is the software for editing well that and, and, and synchronizing that and that's the trick yeah that is just how well, to well, honestly the, the thing about it is is you really don't have to fool with that anymore because honestly all you do is you find a way to link those phones and cameras up to well, one and there's a certain app we just that ha- you can control we would this camera on this we would one. have a just a second laptop in here that runs a program and then the ideal way to do it would be to have a producer or whatever you want to call it sitting there and then they can make the cuts themselves. Right. So well, you just like push a button on the thing well, and it switches from one camera to the a other. Different person as so when talking. Billy's talking, it's the camera that's facing him. Or if you're kind of going back and forth, it's the camera in the middle that features both of you or all, you know, however many guests you have yeah, or back and forth. That. that way you can get the individual mm-hmm. shots. And if you do it, mm-hmm. if you kind of do it on the fly, the editing is really minimal. Yeah. So and that's all I care. I don't even care about editing otherwise. I mean, if you do that, have somebody going back and forth. Yeah. I mean, very simple, but the Appalachian know, video cast. The, I the, like the, it. The, the best thing about the video side of it, it's not really recording the entire shows. It's because like you said, that's a very simple editing as it goes. Like they've got the software and hardware to do that now. What what really counts is being able to go back through there and edit out clips. Clips, because clips you, for you, social you want to take media. That, you want to take that really good story Simon has. Yep. You want to take that really good point you bring up yep. uh, and clip it and then put it out to social media. Not only do you get a crap ton of clicks on there that also bring you money somewhat in return, but then people are interested. They want to go on and listen well, to the rest yeah, of the show. Yeah, that'll bring people to the full thing. And yeah. it just, the video just circulates a thousand percent more yeah. than audio does uh, you know it's always been a direction this was ultimately gonna head it, it yeah i mean oh. you guys got the looks for it i think well, well i mean Billy's no there. we've got the voices for it i don't know about the looks <laughs> you got a Not face it. made for radio <laughs> by the way i don't even know if we've, i think we're 10 minutes in we haven't even made an introduction yet but you know joined once again by our cheeky co-host oh dear simon winch um and then our guest tonight, you recognize him just for a few months ago, one of the fastest turnarounds on the show, Stuart Angel. Stuart, uh, known him forever in a blue moon, known his family forever in a blue moon. And uh, like, I, I think the topics, because the last show we had was a conspiracy show, and so much has happened in that time period, just because that was right after Spike, I think that show came out. Yeah. Uh, uh, right after, right before. So just in that time period from the beginning of the summer, now we are making a close on summer, so much has happened. And... And I like just sitting around having a good time with shows sometimes. So uh, today we went to Roanoke and all my wife's students, I'm not going to 
tear away at where she works at, but all her students, my, me and her father went over there today and, and she used us as guinea pigs for her students to look at for, you know, therapy things and whatnot. And they were all asking about Simon, obviously. And they said, they listen to the show now because he attended one of the classes over the summer and stuff like that. So we went over there and, and did that whole deal. And then after we stopped by the barrel chest and we got all kinds of different, different kind of alcohols, we got Simon, some crazy stuff from, like the oldest brewery in England? Yeah, yeah. Samuel Smith's Nut Brown Ale. And it's quite delightful. Delightful. Have you have you had that before tonight? Oh, yeah. I've had quite a lot of that okay. <laughs> in a past <laughs> life. <laughs> so is that right there as good as you can remember? Absolutely. It's well, that, that's, I mean, the barrel chest and run, like I said, they're not, they don't throw us any money at all, but I go there and they actually today, my father-in-law, he served in Germany for the longest time. So he was asking them about a specific type of beer that comes from a very specific brewery in England. And they were like, well, Hey, we'll look it up, see what we can do. Give me your number. So, uh, you know, that throw us a dime, but good for them. Um, for They've got some great exotic beer right. in there. Yeah. So really. today we went in there and we got this stuff from whatever brewery this is. Um, Paul Smith. Samuel Smith. Samuel Smith. Why did I say Paul? So Samuel Smith. I also got something from uh, uh, Abita, mm. which is down in Louisiana. That's, I've had volumes of that with my We've time. had their Purple Haze in here before, and I just got this stuff that is apparently supposed to be the closest to German beer you can get in the States, which is weird because it comes from Louisiana, which is French, and in the United States. So we all know how much Simon really likes the French. Um <laughs> But I also got a couple more. Got something from this place called Country Boy Brewing in Kentucky, and it's called a Shotgun Wedding. I haven't tried it yet, but I figure since technically Tara and I had a shotgun wedding, it, <laughs> that that I thought that was very appropriate. And it and it's a it's an Appalachia brew too, and um, so I thought that was pretty neat. And I, and I got something else right here, some some kind of beer from uh, I can't remember the name of the uh, the brewery, but it's a darwin's forehead i don't even think i can drink it it's a it's a beautiful can with charles darwin on it we all know uh i mean intellectually speaking one of simon's idols i know he really looks up to <laughs> to darwin and his uh and, and his and his ability to fend off the weak no no not not one of my favorite uh characters in history but there we go i mean that's just a personal opinion so anyway, so so we went over there and got all these kind of different brews. And we have, you know, I got some German stuff as well. Uh, I can't remember even the name of it. Don't even ask me. Uh, Paul Posner, something there at uh, White Plains, New York. I think that's the, uh, 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 what do you call it? Like the uh, the, the Branch or whatever. It's the importer. There you go. But it's actually from, you know, it's some German stuff. Yeah, it's old that's German beer. German yeah. stuff. Yeah, we're, we're, we're rejoined by Stuart Angel here today. And God almighty, we've uh, we've got so much to talk about that, that that's happened uh in, yeah. in the last four months so i, I would what's that sign where do you want to kick off i, well, I want to kick off I, I guess i would ask Stuart in his opinion since the end of may when we were sitting on here last what has been the most important or most impactful thing or event to happen between now and then and that's where we'll kick off from because there's some other conspiracies we didn't even talk about the last time i want to touch on but uh, since then let's see what's uh, the craziest thing well i think just overall like if you've kind of just got any sense of and you pay attention to kind of what's going on in the world, that there's an acceleration going on of events, of of things happening, and it just feels like there's a quickening happening where everything is rushing to a head at some point, some fairly soon in historical times. I mean, it could be, you know, five months. Who knows? As Mr. Trump said yesterday, or it could be, you know, a year or two, but we're, we're obviously hitting a point where, um, the, you know, it's going to be decided kind of which road we go down, whether it's this kind of crazed transhumanism road, or if things kind of stay and get back to more of what we've been used to, at least for the past few explain, decades. Explain so. a little bit, just so that people that won't pick this up. Um, on legacy they may not even pick it up on uh, some of the alternative sites but your five month comment just expand on that a little bit as to what the significance of that comment is yeah so so uh former president trump or president trump whatever you want to call him uh yesterday at a rally in south carolina was speaking and he i don't have the exact quote but he said that um, that Biden and his gang of criminals and, you know, how he 
pontificates on the their syndicate. their criminality. Um, he said that uh, that they basically said that they'll be out of power in five months' time, and we'll be able to start cleaning this whole mess up and getting things back on track as far as you know. But the, the next kind of what presidential we election is, is not until fourteen months from now. <sighs> so. Um, this kind of this kind of leads towards this whole devolution theory, which we kind of touched on just for a second the last time I was here. And the devolution theory kind of summed up in, a, in just a nutshell is that during the first Trump administration, um, they they knew that this kind of uh, this kind of new world order gang of criminals was um dead set on destroying the United States because you can't have a full functioning new world order and great reset. If you have a armed constitutional Republic still standing in the world and the United States, uh, you know, for all the problems it has, it still is the last bastion of what we would consider at least somewhat freedom in the world at this point. And so it's very loosely put. And so to, so you need to destroy that and get rid of that completely for the real great reset and the a full new world order to take place where then every every different nation state around the world is really walking in lockstep with each other um towards this kind of transhumanist goal of eliminating probably 90% of us uh, man merging with a machine central uh, currency 15 minute cities no cars digital central yeah. currency yeah digital central currency so no cash um so they can turn you off anytime they want to like for a conversation like this we wouldn't we'd be hauled off we'd be in the fema camp you know so um what a bet but so 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 the theory is is that during the first trump administration and by the way, Hillary was supposed to win that election in 2016 and then continue the work that Obama had started. Yeah. So really, at this point, we should have been almost eight years farther into this tyranny than we are. But somehow Trump overwhelmed the algorithm in 2016 and got elected. And I'm not here as some giant Trump supporter either. I, the, the, he, there's some good with him. There's some bad with him. But I believe that he's representing a competing mafia for for power and control over the free world. And, um, you know, people like Biden, Obama, and Hillary, they represent this transhumanist agenda that, you know, people like Klaus Schwab, Noah Henwari, um, and other others around the world are saying that is the direction that we are going in. Um, so during Trump's first term, he, d he did a bunch of things with executive orders and maneuvering certain positions in the government in, in certain ways. And basically that when his term was up and they stole the 2020 election, that Biden wasn't really inaugurated as the new president because power had been transferred over in a continuity of government exercise. So and what that kind of means is, is that they're basically that some some faction of the military has actually been in control for the last, you know, two and a half, three years now since Biden supposedly <clears throat> took office. And so then you have Trump yesterday making this statement that in five months we're going to start cleaning this whole mess up. Now, the, the theory is, is that this has all been like a disclosure phase of things, because if Trump had just gone around and arrested all of these rampant criminals, he would have been the dictator that they said he was. So what has actually been going on over this past three years is kind of a revolution of the method and showing the American public and the world how corrupt these people actually are and the, and the pure evil that is actually appearing to be in control at this point. You know, you say something like that. And if you think back now during the Russia collusion thing, you know, Trump, one of his campaign things was why not extend an olive branch to Russia and why not let's, let's say, hey, let's a couple of superpowers all team up and instead of doing evil, let's do good. That was basically what he had said. So what do they do? All of a sudden now he's colluding with Russia and now everything is Russiagate, Russiagate, Russiagate. So anytime he does anything that might further us in good relations with Russia, who, by the way, would be a great trading partner. Let's be honest with you. They've got a ton of natural resources. They've got a ton of, uh, you know, uh, 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 food, uh, natural gases, all this kind of stuff like and 
and and nuclear, oh, and, and, oh, by nuclear the way, warheads. Oh, by the yeah. way, we're not pointing nuclear warheads yeah. at each other. <laughs> like it's a great thing, but all of a sudden now, anything Trump does during his uh, presidency that is as Russia friendly gets con- oh, it, they just they just pound the treason narrative more and more and more, and that's all been disproven. By the way, like it's all com- Russia Gate is. Com- there's still people out there that believe it, but even the the people who originally came out with it have come out and said that it's bullshit. Whatever, everything that they. Uh, that they like they threw the Russia thing at Trump. Well, that's because that's what they were actually doing. Hillary was in collusion with uh, Uranium One and and Russia in these crazy nuclear kind of deals that was going on. She was in it up to her neck with Russians and Ukrainians. And uh, I actually think that this whole Ukraine thing has been Russia actually helping Trump's mafia out and clearing up all of the corruption because it appears that these elites have been using the Ukraine as, first of all, bioweapons labs. Uh, yeah. There was 26 of them. I mean, Victoria Newland came out and admitted that. And she's a... Now, who's cor- Victoria Newland for anybody that doesn't know? What is she? She's not the Secretary of State, but she's the... Uh, she's helping the cab. Yeah, the cab- I forget exactly. Member. But she's she was the one who ran the she's whole... She's number two to the Secretary of State. Okay, yeah. Deputy or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she ran the whole uh, overthrow of the Ukrainian government in 2014. 2014. Yes, she did. Acting um, United States Deputy, Deputy Secretary of yeah, State. She she ran that operation. And uh, and so she, she, after when the news broke that there were all these bioweapons lab there, and of course this is right after they've done the whole COVID stunt where people are interested in bioweapons labs and that there's 26 of them there and Putin is out there saying, hey, this is one of the reasons I'm here is because they're taking Russian DNA and creating you know, DNA-targeted bioweapons to wipe out the Russian population. So um, he's he's cleaning that up. He's cleaning up some of the sex trafficking that's going on there, Don't even, even though it's, it's exploded during this whole yeah, conflict. Absolutely. But but in the end, I think that'll get buttoned up some there. Um, and 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 then the whole banking and money laundering operation that has been going on through the Ukraine for at least the past what eight eight to ten years since twenty fourteen. At, at least. So well, there's a lot of people out there that do not know. Um, and, and if you got liberal friends out there that might not be paying attention because most likely they aren't, uh, Donald Trump was impeached for a quid pro quo, the very exact same thing that Joe Biden did, exactly which you can did. see on camera. Yeah. This is video. <laughs> Joe Biden is sitting there talking and he says, you know, I went in there and said, uh, you know, fire this prosecutor, you're not getting the money. And he said, you don't have the authority to do that. He said, well, Hey, call, call president Obama right now. And, you know, seven hours later, son of a bitch, that's exactly his words. Yeah, yeah. You know, he got the prosecutor fired and then they got the aid. So that is a quid pro quo. But most Democrats or liberals, progressive, they don't know this because it's not put out by the uh, the, the corporate media that, that feeds their minds. Well, it doesn't so, fit their narrative. And it, well, it doesn't. So, so, but I mean, that's it's exactly. But you ask them, they have no idea that it happened. That, so the same thing President Trump was impeached for is the same thing Biden is guilty of. So at the least... We, we have a double standard going on, if not just outright. So from the basis, like, how can you trust anything else beyond that? You know, you, you talk about these other things that are going on. It's like, why should we not uh, flirt with these possibilities? All things considered. Like, I think Stuart's theory is fitting the current narrative. Um, You know, it's beginning to fit. It, it is. And if you look at... Um, there's some people that know a lot more of this than I than I do because that's all they follow is this cold devolution theory. But if you look at everything that's happened or a lot of different isolated events that happened, it's they're proofs of this devolution thing happening. Because I mean, how could it be so clown world and bizarre? Of some of the things that these You're, that these people are doing. Yeah, I mean, well, it's like it's almost like they're. They're putting on like a show to even try to wake more people up to the lunacy that's going on. I mean, it's it's in your face. Yeah, I mean, it's blatant. It yeah. used to be hidden. They used to call people that believed in any of these sorts of things crazy, tinfoil hat wearers. And now, I mean, if you're not, you know, <laughs> thinking that they're lying to you immediately, then you're the crazy person at this point. You know, it's like. Uh, it's, how I mean, many times? How many times can you get lied to by the same entity before you're 
you know, if that was your girlfriend or your wife or your brother or your friend, you'd have been done with them years ago. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? But uh-huh. somehow it's, you know, they've got people, you know, under this trance that they're here to help you and we're on your side and it just couldn't be farther from the truth. Oh, Reagan had that expression, correct? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> One of the eight scariest words in the mm-hmm. English language. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> that's that really is just about sums it up <laughs> well he should know after they tried to kill him uh-huh. you know after the bushes tried to knock him off <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah i think um <laughs> I, I mean it's mind-boggling the direction we're going and why so much is being focused on ukraine right now when we know it's a losing battle we know that that and, and at, at at worst, Russia probably has a legitimate argument here in this battle. Just because we perceived them as enemies 40 years ago doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong. And oh, by the way, if you want to talk about right and wrong in the issue, maybe we should bring up Iraq and Afghanistan. And maybe we should bring up Syria and uh, uh, every other Middle Eastern and North Africa country that we've went in there and bombasted in the past 30 years. Who are we to talk about invading you know, our, you know what I mean? That's right. Who the That's hell are right. we? That's and and this truth. is coming. I'm, I'm a Iraqi veteran. I was there in the invasion. That's the I truth. love my guys. And, and I know all of us were there for the right reasons. And we were doing what we thought because we didn't believe that we would be lied to, to this degree. And yeah. now, fortunately, all of us, thanks to the internet, we've all been able to look back. And I'm telling yeah. you, how, how how can we sit there and honestly look at Russia right now with a straight face and said, how dare you? No, and I mean, if you actually listen to Putin's speeches, which I've listened to a couple of them translated, and I mean, everything that our media is telling you about, now look, is Putin probably a bad guy? He was KGB. He was stationed in East Germany. He, you know, he was, he was obviously, he was obviously groomed for this position. Um, but if you listen to what the man says, he talks about family, he talks about Christian values, he talks about getting Russia to those places. He talks like we would not, have not hoped, a KGB we that, would have that wasn't talked a KGB like what we a. hoped our presidents would have talked like 30, 40, 50 years ago. That's what he sounds like. And you know, well, Putin, just is, don't, a, Putin is a Russia first guy. That's, and yeah. I think that's why people hate him so much is because he doesn't buy into this globalist narrative. He's that's like, right. We all serve our, you know, we'll get He's called, the only we'll, one. we're all going to get called Putin. Like, yeah, whatever, whatever, and, yeah, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. and it doesn't matter. Like, like Putin is every bit as dirty and evil as, as United States uh, presidents, as the Ecuadorian president, as the Chinese. Exactly. I mean, they're all, freaking they're all corrupted. that way. But at the very least, you know, Putin looks out for Russia, where I wish we had a president looked after for yeah. us here. Uh, and and you know what? Given he was KGB back in the day, you know, considering they were a communist, like he doesn't really spit off the communist no, vibe. No, he wants no part of that sort of You know of what I mean? So, thing. I mean, what, what, why, Which is why positive, not, considering we're why, heading down the commie trail. Why are we not embracing? Like, why why are we not working together <laughs> with, like, Rush? You know what I mean? Well, like, I, think, I think the devolution theory would say that we kind of are. It's just not the current regime that is working with him. It's Trump's. I call Trump working for a mafia because, I mean, he grew up working for the mafia in, in New York, or at least side by side with him. But whatever whatever cabal Trump is being backed by is, I believe, on and is on Putin's team. I believe they're working congruently together because because the uh, the dictatorship and the well, the glo- the glo- this is an anti globalist exactly. Um, existence we have which and, and at the moment we, we can really say that putin is the only one standing up yeah to it yeah because they got rid of uh lula stole the election in brazil and got rid of uh there, there's all those shenanigans are going on but uh yeah it, it, but i guess now you've got this guy in argentina that appears to be He's searching, an searching through the he, polls. He, he is spike he's a, Cohen. yeah he's an he anarcho capitalist yes, or whatever and uh he's you know he's young he's He's got some flash. He, if you get that guy in down there, you can get Trump back in here. You've got Putin. That's you know you start to get this kind of beachhead to them where and like we were saying before, which is anti globalism. Exactly, anti globalism. Yeah, and anti transhumanism. Yeah, you know 
Now, so that we would be remiss if we didn't bring up, and, and, and this is this is where I'm going to be devil's advocate because look, like Putin, because everybody's going to say we're Putin apologists here, whatever. I don't really give a shit what you say. I am a for peace person, yeah, and whatever too. whatever avenue we can take there, and that, in my personal opinion, is the best way to peace and sue Putin, not Zelensky. Why? Because as you stated, Putin has been in the game. Putin is somebody that has fought, who has seen, who has been able to come to at least decisions based on real life experiences. What is Zelensky? Zelensky is a Ukrainian version of John Stewart. He's a Peter's he, piano player. He is, yes, he uh, he is uh, a he uh, is an actor who has been placed into power now. And and here's where I play devil's advocate. We could also say Trump is also that actor that has been put into a position as of. And here's a Faustian deal. It's like okay, Trump. You will be the most loved president in the history of this country. You will also simultaneously be the most hated president in the country. But you have, you must go out here and do this, and this is your deal. I, I, you know what? I mean, for love, I mean, I, I want to believe that he's going to come in the next go round and things are going to get better. But he let Fauci stay on way too long. He let Comey stay on way too long. He let uh, he made some big mistakes, awful mistakes. I he mean, he he still he still stands behind the the vaccine. Yeah. He still helps that warp speed as being such a great like like he was not a good second amendment i mean trump was a democrat from he was a bill clinton democrat that's yeah. what he was he was you know he's a which in hindsight isn't a bad thing especially in the world we're living in now but compared to in where my we're world at. it's still not good enough well it's not, not, not a long shot but like i was about to say we were talking before you get Trump in this time, and because of the mass awakening that has been going on, specifically since COVID, but since the first, you know, Trump first got elected, it it gets us back to a, a place of somewhat stability to then where we're not just putting out these fires all the time, and then we do one better than Trump next time, well, and then we do one better than that guy the next time. We're not going to make this. 180 degree jump from, from the tyranny and lack of freedom that we've been under, especially since 9 11, just all the way back to even like the 90s at this point. Let's get it back to 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Yes. And then let's get, then let's jump another eight years. Then let's jump another 10 years. And then let's, I think that's the kind of the goal that we need to have by like 2040, if we could be in a place where we have, you know, We've rolled back the Patriot Act. We've gotten rid of this ND National Defense Authorization Roll Act that gets fan. signed every year. Yeah, get, get back to sound currency. money. Yes. If we can, you know, just chip away at these things, but there's no way to do that when you're living in this chaos that has well, been going on specifically the past three years, but really since nine eleven. Yeah, since nine eleven. And so there and the, there has to be a turnaround point. And I think Trump can provide that turnaround point. And, and that's the thing. Like now, whether I think Trump is going along with the game and he is controlled opposition or not, I think at this point it's completely inconsequential because what matters is the base is fired up. What matters is people are fired up and you can't put that cat back in the exactly. bag. You know what I mean? Like the Pandora's box has been opened. So the only hope you can have going forward is that Trump really is a different member of the, you know, like you said, a different member of the mafia, but a mafia that is at least better for I mean, your he, community than it is for some community half a world away. So he was recruited by military intelligence to run. I mean, that's kind of been the thing behind the scenes that a lot of people have talked about ever since he got elected the first time. I mean, he was being tapped from the early eighties by people like Nixon. As, Oprah. As, hey, you're going to be, pre you're gonna be president. That? You're yeah, going to be president one day. Um, and, and if you know anything about his family, his uncle, John Trump was a scientist for MIT, I believe MIT, but he was the guy that when Tesla passed away, was given all of Tesla's work to go through for the government. Whoa. So, I mean, and now that's some heavy hit stuff right there. Yeah, so, is. you know, Trump isn't this guy who's just, his family has been, you know, in real estate and everything else. His family has been deeply tied to a lot of things that the government's been doing for, you know, almost a hundred years at this point. So, you know, I, I just think that we don't have any other option right now. That's the problem it's on the national level. Of course, we got local things we could do. There's one other thing about this devolution theory. There's this Dr. Uh, Jan Halper Hayes. It's a, uh, she's, she's a lady who's an expat. Now she lives in England and she was on Piers Morgan's morning show uh -huh. about a month ago. I don't know if any of you saw this clip where she talked about that. So after the civil war, 
the United States of America as we think it is was actually basically set aside and the corporation of the United States of America was born underneath the crown because the North had borrowed so much money from England to win the Civil War. They went into debt, basically. And so they created this new corporation. And it's basically a partnership between D.C., Lond- the city of London, city of London. And, and the Vatican. Okay. And on the... On the uh, on this show with Pierce Morgan, apparently this Dr. Jan Halper Hayes uh, is part of some task force with the Defense Department and has all these government connections, blah, blah, blah. Well, she's on there with Pierce Morgan, and she's the one they bring on these shows over in England whenever they're talking about Trump. They brought her on to talk about all these indictments. Well, she brought up the fact that basically Trump was brought in because he's an expert in bankruptcies and that he bankrupted the United, the corporation of the United States that had been around since 1871. And if you remember back when Trump met the queen for the first time in England, there was this huge controversy about him walking in front of her before she stood up and started walking. Well, she said that that was a subtle hint to people in the know that their deal was done and that this partnership between D.C., City of London and the Vatican that all debts have been settled now and we are unentangling. And she she said this on the Piers Morgan show and he kind of he basically danced away from it. Um, That's a real hot potato. It's a hot potato. Well, now she's kind of been making the rounds on some other shows because people were like, well, wait a minute. You know, we've always kind of heard this theory that, you know, the United States became a corporation at some point. Well, that's what um, your social security number is. Exa- well, exactly. So um, so anyway, she's kind of explained it a little more, and she's like, yeah, and she brought up all of this, you know, all of these kind of things that were written after the Civil War and everything that shows that, yeah, we haven't really been living in the constitutional republic we think we've been since living in since 1871. And... And that's why you never hear any of these politicians actually calling it that. They call it a democracy. Well, yeah, now that's just absolutely ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous, but apparently that's kind of, you know, there's there's evidence to back this up. Now, if Trump did dissolve that, that really leads into even a bigger proof for this devolution theory that all this power is being devolved back down to the states and to the individuals away from this federal entity that has been ruling over things with this iron fist. So, Well, it's called thievery by taxation. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, that's what it boils down to. Yeah, that we've been paying off these debts all these years. So... I mean, take it for what it is. Do some research into it. Do some reading into it. It's it's really interesting, and a lot of things are starting to like piece together. Because when I first started hearing about this, I was like, "Wait a minute, no way!" You know, like you are with anything. You yeah, start it's like to hear about smoke starts well, leaking out the back. Well, of your but head. Then, then you start to hear a little more, and you, then this piece of information comes into play, and you're like, "Well, wait a minute, that fits with that." You know, that actually makes sense if you look at the big picture. So it's pretty interesting. It's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I mean putting those pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together is well, I mean, actually quite mind blowing to start with. Yeah. Well, I mean, the entire world is about puzzles and <laughs> secrecy, and it's about you know piecing things together. It's about Faustian deals. It's about you know projecting what you're doing onto your enemy. It's about letting the people know what you're doing so you have plausible deniability at a later date. You know what I mean? Like like everything they do, you know, to, to some degree is calculated, but every now and then they let it slip. You know, every now and then they'll like, the like when Chuck, Chuck Schumer a few years ago let it slip. Like when they were talking about Trump going after the Alphabet Boys, uh-huh. you know, Chuck Schumer basically said, "Well, you know, you got to be careful with that because they got seven ways of Sunday after coming after you." You know what <laughs> I mean? And and let's not let's not put pieces to the side that we have somebody right now who is being suppressed by the Democrats, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., uh-huh. who like him or not. Um, is probably should be polling better than any Democrat out there right now, and. <laughs> He is not getting any of the the, the the love or press that he deserves. He's getting no airtime. And he himself has come out and stated that, you know, he knows that his uncle and his father's killings both weren't didn't go down the way that they said. In fact, I'm pretty sure he He's come did, out and did, pointed did, at did, the did CIA. He not point at the CIA yeah, for he his said dad. The CIA did it. For his, yes. I mean <laughs> I mean these, these 
this is happening right now. I mean, it's crazy. Things Twenty years ago, we were on the internet and and these weird, crazy chat rooms late at night. You know, high, just bored, reading this stuff up. Like, oh, this is crazy. How they? I mean, it's out. I mean, this is the man it's coming out. This is the man. He is the nephew of John F. Kennedy. He is the son of Robert F. Kennedy. Both killed. By, by crazy circumstances, you know, 50 years ago, and he is sitting there telling the world right now who did it, who did it, and that it wasn't what they said. And you know what? Yeah. And, and, and half the people don't even care empathy. And the other half are like, we already knew it. Yeah. We've known. You know yeah. what I mean? So it, so was, it, it was pretty obvious. <laughs> it was, I mean, it's, but now it's almost, I mean, it's got to a point of being an accepted fact. So once again, it's another conspiracy theory, um, that has been debunked. Um, and is in fact, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? A spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler well, you know what I want to do? I want to, I want to circle back around a bit. We're going to come back because this is all going to tie in together because I want to talk about how we got to this point and where we're at now and where it's going. But I wanted to, I wanted to jump in and, and segue something because so many things have happened. Like I said, since the last time Stuart was on here and this is what I want to talk about. And while I've got it up right now, I want to bring it up because this is our buddy right here. Uh, from the state of Appalachia, Appalachia Stanny, Brandon, good friend. He was oh, on the show did. a couple of weeks ago. Go back and, and look back at anything that says state of Appalachia or Appalachia Stanny and our shows and listen to him. It's always been a great show. He was also on our 100th uh, episode uh, special uh, a couple of weeks ago. We did the show with him, and you can follow him on Twitter at Appalachia Stanny. And right now, some questions are coming in about this show. I, I made a tweet. By the way, go follow us at Get On Tap because that's where everything. I will, I will make a, and I've said this three weeks now, I'm going to keep saying it. I'll make a post on Facebook. I'll make the exact same post on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. We've got 10,000 followers on Facebook. I will get no likes, no comments, nothing. On Twitter, I'm getting hundreds of likes, hundreds of, you know, every, every time. And Twitter pays us. Twitter pays us. I pay Facebook. I pay Facebook to promote our shows. Twitter pays me. We get more engagement, more people following. It's the shadow place to go. Banning. So, so, yeah. so yeah, we're being shadow banned like crazy on Facebook yeah. for obvious. So go follow us on Twitter, but it's at Appalachia Stanny. And I, I want to do this for some of our shows here as we promote the shows. Hey, look, come on our Twitter thread. Tell us the things you want us to talk about. So this is a conspiracy he brought up and, and I agree with him on this. So I'm going to read his exact tweet. Uh, the F-35 over South Carolina. <laughs> he said, I'm pretty sure it was hacked in the pilot bailed after losing control of the aircraft. Usually the DOD is quick to state while their pilots eject instead of flimsy bad weather statement. Now we had Whitey Taylor on a couple of months ago and we talked about the jet that crashed in Callaway about 20 years ago. They were there in five minutes. It was right by my house. They were there in five minutes, right? They yeah. had all the neighbors were out of there gone. Now they didn't find this plane or talk about finding this plane for another day. Well, okay. So, G g give us a conspiracy world consensus the, on this. The whole thing stinks to high hell. It does. As the either, narrative is awful. As either like a complete fake event somehow, or that this plane was given to somebody and this is the bullshit cover story that they came up with. I mean, you've got the pilot getting to a guy's house, but then the pilot doesn't call his base. He doesn't call his CO. He doesn't do, he doesn't do any of the standing oper standard operating procedure that he would have done in that situation. And whenever you see SOP being violated, you know, something stinks that this yes, is a show are, for the public. They are very disciplined. So they yeah, know exactly. the guy who I mean, lives at the house best. calls 911, but he's talking to the pilot. It, it, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling how stupid this is. And then the supposed place that it crashed, you've got that interview with the guy that's oh, that, doing yes, the whistling yes. and the... I mean, that was generic. Do you know what, what we're talking about? Please go look this up. You don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Please go. We are living in the Truman Show. Yes. We are living in the... And I've never even watched the Truman Show, but I know... It's idiocracy. Oh, my. That, too. It's, it's a mix. It's a, it's, it's and a mix. And I laugh my ass off when that's oh. like a minute... <laughs> The 35 well, going over. Well, the, the rap remix has already happened on Twitter, by the way, in case you're wondering. <laughs> and and then the, the, you've got the same sort of debris field in quotations as I'm doing now um, that you had with the Shanksville 9 11 plane, where there's. You, I, I saw one photo of one military guy carrying like a little piece of bit metal. That was about all I saw of a plane that crashed. So I didn't even look that far into so it. So my guess is. My guess is that Biden, this was a payoff to somebody he was in debt to, and that that plane did get hacked. 
they made it seem like it was going to crash to get the pilot out, and then they flew that thing somewhere else because it did oh, not wow. crash where they said it crashed. And I'm they sorry. also that, now, now 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 for anybody out there thinking you're crazy and stuff, they also for the next two days grounded all aircraft yeah. after that. So if it was a at first, it was. It was weather. No, no, no. At first, I, I, yeah, it was weather. It was, weather. It was always weather. Well, it, no, it, at first it was uh, a malfunction, and then it was weather. Um, but either way, it's just like, wh- why? No, it stinks. Why? Why? And we why? Know that- so what was that? What was that detail about grounding all aircraft? Yeah. yeah so, so for they, two days, the military grounded all aircraft. All military aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. So if it was a, a pilot error or weather, why would you ground the rest of your aircraft for two days? Exactly. The, wouldn't that be like well, maybe somebody hacked in our system? We should probably ground everything. Just like nine eleven, it's like well, every there could be terrorists on board of every plane. Let's ground every plane for the time. Well, except for the plane that they're taking the Bin Ladens out of the country. That's right. That was allowed to go that day, just in case you want to <laughs> you want to look back into that. Not uh-huh. being conspiratorial, but those are facts. Yep, the Bin Ladens got to fly out. Yep, Warren Buffett got to fly that day too. Yeah, well, He's I mean, I'm, I'm sure there was a handful of high level people that got to fly that day. I'm sure there was a handful of German Baptists around here too, taking their planes out for joy rides. Nobody gave a crap about it yeah. as well. But <laughs> yeah, that plane that crashed here was, you know, it was maybe five miles from my parents' house. Yeah, the jet and, back in like 2004, I think. Yeah, it was just and, like and the back of my house. Oh, yeah. factory yeah. so you live out that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was on Factory, factory Hill, Hill, and uh, and yeah, they had that completely locked down within ten to twelve minutes. You know, I mean, it was locked down tight as a tight as a. That's what I was telling people on the internet. I said, "Look, this is nonsense." This is two thousand and four. This is nonsense that they didn't know where that plane crashed. With all the technology, with all the GPS, with all the other stuff, they. That's why you don't believe anything that they've told you about this story. It's either completely fake, which I don't understand why, except to demoralize people of the fact that our government is so inept that we can't even keep track of a $80 million aircraft. Oh, but they could keep you track know. of that grandma who was there on January 6th walking That's around right. with 95 cameras and decide to raid her house in Alaska because at 75 years old, she did so much that day. Yep. You with, know what I mean? I mean that they did. They yeah. tracked her. Yeah. That, with that the, happened. With the same technology, they claim. They lose that an $80 billion with, dollar plane. With 2,000 mules that, oh, you can't use that technology to track these people's stuff in these ballot boxes. Meanwhile, they, meanwhile, they're using it to find to find Granny Smith and send her to jail for four years for praying inside the Capitol. <laughs> it's I mean, ridiculous. it's it's unbelievable the cognitive dissonance that you have to have at this point to believe any of this nonsense. Is I mean, really it doesn't something. pass. It doesn't even pass. It just doesn't pass any form of sniff test. If you just, if you only just look at it for just a second, the problem is most people just le- read the headline, head back down. Yeah, well, they're, they're, on. they're scrolling. Yeah, they're flipping. That's it. Oh, oh funny. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> funny. Yeah. Oh, I might look at that. Uh, no, let me look at the next one. Yeah, but oh, if you yeah. actually even just like take ten seconds to just think about it, all of it just falls off. absorb. Yeah, critical thinking. What a concept. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think. I mean. <laughs> but yeah, that's they. How do you lose it? Yeah, and 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 how is it a day later? Go to public school. <laughs> and, and okay, so so you lose it. <laughs> there you go. So so somebody help me out with this one. You lose it, right? But you don't find it or release finding it till a day later. But it crashed not very far. I mean, you're talking about a fighter jet going hundreds of miles an hour that only crashed a few miles away not, from where allegedly he ejected. Not just that, but the most powerful military in the world comes out begging the public for help in finding its lost jet. <laughs> oh, if you have any information about where I misplaced my $80 million F-35, please give the, me a call. The memes, once again, <laughs> at get on tap on Twitter, X, whatever it is now. Go check out the memes that were being shared that day. We had uh, the lectern guy. You remember him from uh, January 6th? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, been back and forth with him. He might actually be on this show here in the next oh, few cool. months. I think that'd be a great story. There was a, a photo of him carrying the F thirty five. There was a photo <laughs> of the 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 nuclear person. You know the tra- cross dressed nuclear person that stole luggage. Oh yeah, them. yeah, yeah. He was carrying. Uh, it. Uh, that's Spike, a good one. Spike yeah. even said that he's got it now. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there was the, the memes that came. It's unbelievable. I mean, this, is, this is ridiculous. It's I mean, ridiculous. I mean, like, like I, I know. We're trying to make a good show out of this, but as we're sitting here as human beings, like it is a, it is a clown world. It is clown world 
nonsense. Yeah, it's something. We else. lost an F-35. <laughs> we lost, according to this is what they admitted to. Yeah. So obviously we know, number one, they're always lying. And if they admitted to it, then it's obviously 100% of the time worse than with the actual case. Because if it was, wasn't was that bad, they'd have never admitted it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it wasn't that bad, they would have never admitted to it. They'd have just stood their ground like, ah, it's okay. But they knew it was a major foul up. And the best they could admit to was, we've lost I'm 80 billion, is it billion? 80, 80 billion. 85 million. 85 billion. 85 billion. Million. Dollar, yeah. Eric. We've lost I, it. I want to I want to raise just, this is a <laughs> counter thought here that just struck me. The pilot broke all forms of SOP in reporting his location and what happened. By doing so, he basically went public. Do you see the implications? Well, see, of that's, if he, if he, if he didn't go very public, good. he would definitely probably be wearing some concrete shoes somewhere well maybe or maybe he's an actual patriot that so here's a theory that i just came I was up just with since process. you said that yeah so if i'm right that this this jet was allowed to be hacked and given to someone else the pilot would probably not have been in on it and so they appear to make the plane crash he ejects from it he says somebody took this thing over I had no control over anything that was going on. I'm going to do this now because they tried to set me up and I'm going to go public basically immediately. Probably saved his life. It could have. It if, could if, well I have. mean, if that's actually what happened, but it kind of makes sense that why would he break what has been drilled into him since the first day that he signed on that dotted line to, to join the military, which is, there's a there's a chain of command. Yeah, but where would he have gone in that blacked out SUV that picked him up? Well, if he'd applied to the SO, if he followed an SOP. Well, I I don't think that necessarily would have done anything to him if it was just an actual like crash. You know what I mean? We're dealing like, with evil here, remember? Well, we are, but I mean, the eight, eighty-five million dollars to them is nothing. Guess what? Their their uh, their contractor buddies get to make more money because we now we got to build a new one again. You know what I mean? Like, Military jets being stolen by being hacked. That's what I think. Well, that's very plausible. That's what I think. Very plausible. It was either you know deliberate or you know hacked and they didn't know it or. Whatever, Again, you whatever whatever the, backdoor key was needed, which we know that the, a lot of those parts for those planes were made in China and in other places, and it's been riddled since day one with operating problems because of that, and that we know that the Chinese are putting backdoors into every different thing that they're building and giving out to the world. So yeah. why you know maybe it, maybe it went to Iran. You know, we know Biden, the Biden, fact, Biden the and Obama may, are tight with Iran. So. The fact that it may have been stolen is, is well. I mean, go look at the pictures of that debris field. There's, at this there's point, nothing I there. I say, why not? I mean, it makes, it honestly, it makes more sense than the story they're selling us. Yeah, having grounded the whole U.S. Air Force fleet for, for two, two days, days afterwards is a key it detail. Was a marine, it was a Marine air camp, but they grounded all, yeah. if I'm not, Navy, Air Force, Army, all of them. Yeah. That's a key point here. Yeah, very much so. I mean, I mean, it certainly feeds the conspiracy theory, doesn't it? Well, you know, if we could trust what they're telling us, we wouldn't have to sit here and theorize. There you go. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, the whole thing stinks. But we know what they're selling us is crap. <laughs> yes, so exactly. we've got to try to find, you know, the the fruit. And Need to have a chat with the pilot. Yeah, I, that's <laughs> what I, yeah, I'd i like to hear what he ha actually yeah. has to say. You know, I'm sure there might be a I mean, that'll, that's hearing. never going to that's never going to happen now. You know, he'll never, never be heard from it. again. But it's it's wild. I mean, that's a wild thing. I mean, like I said, we literally oh, I mean, like I said, I, I love this show. I love the fact that we've had so many interesting guests over the years and we have managed to come out with a story about a crash jet that did happen here in Franklin County. As Stuart just said, not yeah. far from his house, not far from Amos's house. We had Whitey on there who was the first person on the news, obviously, because it was Whitey Taylor. Go back and check out that episode if you haven't listened to it yet. It is probably one of the it's best. Wild. It was one of the well, best shows we've ever done. But what, I mean, like you said, they were there in 20 minutes and they what, told the people in the neighborhood that it crashed at, you're gone. That's what I immediately thought. I immediately thought about that. What happened? And I remember driving 
through there the next day because that's the way I would go to Roanoke from my parents' house is the back way to go right down a little factory. Yeah, yeah. And you couldn't get through there. This was it for for like three days. They had the that whole little section just completely locked down. You couldn't get in. There was no asking the public for help in locating a jet. No, <laughs> I mean they it, knew exactly just, where it was at. In yeah, minutes. Waddy Taylor was there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he was there. Then yeah. come on, man. And and he is twice the character that the guy they put on there for <laughs> oh, the, yeah, exactly. the whistling and stuff. So, I mean, come on now, that's amateur hour. Waddy Taylor as a professional. Go back and listen to that show. It's called the Man, the Myth, the Legend. Waddy Taylor. I'm <laughs> telling you. If this is the first time you listened and you hadn't went back and listened. The implications of some of his statements back. Look, he starts, he, he starts off. And, and great stories from politics and following Trump all the way down to the, to the racetrack. But he starts off the show talking about pepper spraying liberals. <laughs> and, or not liberals, progressives. And how he figured out that it's better to do it outside the store. Because if he yeah. does it inside the store, then he's got to shut down for two hours before it <laughs> to clear out. And he's going to lose that money. Phenomenal show. Phenomenal. I, but... Good segue right here because because uh, there's so much. You I'll can tell you, I was going to go back to the original question you asked me. What do I think is the biggest thing that's happened? Holy in shit! The we're past hour four, in and we're in the past getting. four months, and I think it has to be the Maui fire. Okay, well that's where I was going to go uh, next anyway. It's got that's where I was going to go next anyway. <laughs> All right. So what the hell happened in Maui? I mean, look, you've got the base story that the the uh, the media has given us that. Um, power line down, massive power, winds. power lines down. They hadn't been, uh, you know, trimming up the brush as they should, and all those things are true. Yes, yeah, very much true. That's why the wildfires but, are so wild but, out in the West, in California, they, and, and in Canada. And then, and then you supposedly have the fire coming up over this mountain, but then you have winds which come from the south of Hawaii, which is an odd thing. Apparently, normally the like if there was a normally if there was a a hurricane or something else that would come in the other way, according to what locals say there. So you've got that. That was a little bit strange. But when you start looking at some of the pictures and the videos of, of what, the devastation that was done there, and you see a car sitting in the middle of a grass field that's 100 yards by 100 yards, and none of the grass is burnt, but the car is melted, Things don't start to add. Things aren't adding up the way that they should with just this being a natural grass, you know, a natural fire that then spreads around. Then when you, then when you start to realize that you watch a guy, a guy walking down and seeing everything just burnt and destroyed, but then all of a sudden he finds a stack of blue t-shirts that haven't been burnt or touched at all in a building that looks like a pile of rubble. Kind of like then you kind of like a. Passport surviving, it, yeah, exactly. A, a crash kind of like that, yeah. And following, and then you realize that <laughs> that uh, Oprah Winfrey, who lives there and owns a couple thousand acres in Maui, somehow her none of her property got touched, but all of her buildings, the roof is painted blue, which is odd. And then you st- see an aerial photograph where everything's destroyed except for this building that had a blue roof, and then this building that had a blue roof over here, and. Then you start to hear the theories about, well, maybe there were some, maybe this was some form of like energy weapon or directed energy weapon. That's the current theory. And then you, and then you learn that there are two military facilities in the United States that do this sort of research and do these things. And one of them is in New Mexico and the other one is in Maui. And then you and then you watch a demonstration online where uh, somebody takes a, a little, a tiny microwave laser and burns something that's you know, red and it burns up and then burns something that's black and it burns up. But when they put it on the thing that's blue, it doesn't burn up. Yeah. Hmm. So there's something about these microwave laser weapons and lasers that the color blue, it somehow repels it or it's, I it has to, I guess has to do with the fact that the, you know, with these microwave weapons, it does work somewhat in light spectrums and stuff like that. And so something with blue prevents it from burning. White also prevents it some, and it doesn't burn as bad as all the other colors in the spectrum. It sounds like a very racist weapon. <laughs> yeah. But there's something with blue where it actually kind of repels it. And so, it, it, then you've got the you know the police setting up barricades, not letting people leave. You've got a complete lockdown of the place 
after a day or two where they're not letting even journalists in to view the damage and devastation. And I mean, we're talking, and this is the specific area of Maui, Lahaina, is was the kingdom of Hawaii's capital before we took it over. Um, and it's the most historic part of all the islands that are there. Um, <clears throat> now, I know I, I like Brandon Stewart on the show because he is very in tune to this stuff more than I am. I'm, I'm very surface level. Surface level, the day after, you already saw the governor already talking about the state going in and taking over that property. That had happened. And you also that was saw all the, you also saw all the reports of the barricades and and the barricades were set up and the only people that survived those fires were the people who ignored government orders That's and drove right. around the barricades. There was a cop there preventing people from getting out and the people who stayed there got burned up alive. The only people who made it were the people who ignored the government orders or drove around. So those two things That's right. Yeah. continue on there. But I just want everybody to know as somebody that only knows the surface level stuff, I do know that the governor came out on camera and said, we're looking at how the state can take over these properties, which by the way, as Stuart was, was alluding to before I jumped in, uh, very, very sacred property yeah. that that is. And those people that, that their property, I mean, had houses on them, probably, you know, generational, like uh, uh, close to what I've got right here, you know, very traditional, nothing crazy have been offered $10 million well, for their property and has turned it down because that is, that is a community right there. You know what I mean? That is a, that is people. That was. is what we should all aspire to be, and then the, but also take heed. Like that's what we're trying to build that community right there that continuously turned down and pay very close attention to this. Everybody listens to this show. This is a very rare moment. Those people in Hawaii that have turned down for years and years and years, millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars for their property because it means more to them than money is exactly what we are striving for here in Franklin County and Appalachia, everywhere across the country. We want our land to be sacred. We want our area to only have the best and the brightest and money be damned because our values and our and our and our views and everything like that is more important than money. That is what we are striving for. So let's pretend that these conspiracies are true. That community was targeted. Oh, of course it was. That is the case. So we should all be very aware of that. We shall be very aware that at any moment in time, everything that we're fighting for and we stand. You at any moment, Waco. It happened in Waco. You know what I mean? Wait, think, what, think what you where want. Where are all the missing? So we'll yeah we'll get to that yeah so so continue but on you're, but you're right they're targeted communities everywhere the the train crash that happened in Ohio yep. I mean that was a targeted you know breadbasket of the United States you know a lot of grains and foods made there and how much you know of the 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 population that was affected by that water yeah that the water that it flowed into I think went down to the Ohio River yeah and it basically hits everything it goes everywhere except for us mm -hmm. yeah like we're one of the fortunate ones like on this side of the Blue Ridge we're not affected yep this side of the Blue Ridge we're not affected so yeah so and in fact talking about the land and how valuable that is all of the people in Lahaina especially for the past three years, had been getting absolutely harassed by developers and people trying to come in and buy that land. Well, in March of this year, all of those phone calls stopped. They, mm. were, they weren't being harassed anymore. They weren't being asked to sell anymore. So I believe there was a decision made sometime just before March or March of this year that, okay, this tactic of trying to buy them off with hundreds of millions of dollars isn't working. We're going to... We're going to get rid of them another way. And you had, you had just like with COVID, you had a event 201 where they ran through this whole pregame of how we're rolling COVID out, how we're going to control the media narrative and all that. Well, you had those same sort of meetings going on in Maui over the past six months before this fire, where they were talking, setting up and talking about how we're turning this into a 15 minute city, how we're going to turn this into the most technologically advanced island in the world. And everything's going to be run with AI. Um, you, so you had all of these things going on in the lead up to that fire. And then you've got the mayor making the statement that he made the day after the fire. And it all lines up to this being, you know, a planned, first of all, eliminates the population, 
eliminate people who definitely are going to stand in our way with whatever we want to do. And we're going to take what we want now. And then give the survivors $700. Yeah. I mean, what a slap in the face. And let's say it was a, comical. Let's say it was a, a directed energy weapon, a laser of some sort. You've got Biden's presidential account tweeting out how he's laser focused on Maui. I mean, it's it's in your face if you're paying attention. Wow. Um, but uh, but so so you have total destruction, total devastation. You've got people getting trapped in there by the government, not allowing them out to burn to death, and then you have two thousand kids that are now missing. Now they're not admitting that these kids are missing, but if you look at the fact that the areas that got burned up, there were about 2000 school children in that area, only 480, some of them, the last time I looked, which was probably about a week ago, only 480 of them have re-signed up for school in the other parts of Maui. And this is actually physically in class or by distance learning online. So that's six, almost six, uh, just over 1,600 kids or 15, yeah. just over 1,500 kids that are just missing at this point. Now they're either burned up and killed or even worse, maybe they're, they're on an island somewhere with, you know, the next Epstein. Well, you so, know, to, to, to put it back to what, I brought up earlier. I mean, this really is, as far as Hawaii is concerned, this is probably a rural community. Like, mo uh, and, and it is. And, and to your point, as you're describing this, I want, I want people to understand that the majority of the people who lived here, yes, these are very valuable properties, but these are very middle class, modest, people modest that people. live with us, and most of them were out of the area that day because what is about eighty percent of the Hawaiian economy. Tourism. Tourism. So they were all off in the touristy areas. Yep. So this happened while their kids were still in the area and they were off in other areas. Well, and they and the schools knew those parents weren't home and they tried to send those, they sent those kids home from school. So these kids were, you know, about 80% of them. Maybe there was grandma or grandpa around. Maybe there was a neighbor or older brother around. But these kids were left at home alone during well, what see. happened there. So either they were actually sent home or they were rounded up and, you know, bust out. And, you know, I mean, but they're not telling us the truth about what happened to all these people. You know, no, there's definitely they're, they're a, not telling us the truth. It's, it's, so, it's, it's, it's not to call it nefarious is is it's way beyond that. No, it's just about as evil as it gets. Yeah. But I mean, but I, I believe they were they did the same thing several years ago with those Paradise, California fires. I mean, you've and you've got you've got these videos from Maui too of people videos and they they sh you see this blue beam coming down out of the sky. It's you know it's over here that it's over there and it's I mean yeah the videos you saw, are the, out there, you saw sure. the same I've thing in it. Paradise. Yeah. You saw the same thing up in Canada earlier this summer when you had all of like there was like fifteen fires there that started go. within ten, oh, ten seconds of each other. If you go, look. if you watch the if you watch the radar maps of it happening, they all start at the exact same time. I mean, yes. this isn't natural stuff, people. Something else is going on. And find me a better explanation than than directed energy weapons, and I'll I'll listen and believe it. Or, but, or mainstream media. Well, I mean, yeah. corporate. <laughs> I media. wouldn't wipe my butt. Corporate with media because mainstream media now. What the mainstream is actually is, us is Joe Rogan, it's Tim Cast IRL, yeah. it is the Appalachian More podcast. people listen to it, yes, yeah. without a doubt. Tim Cast, we'll say legacy media, it, it, yeah, well, corporate media, corporate media, corporate media. That's what Michael Malice describes it best as corporate media. Go follow him by a chance if you don't. One of the best propagandists out there, yes, they're propagandists, that's what uh, they are. Yeah, I mean, everything about the whole Maui deal, and and look for anybody listening to this. I'm, I know here recently The Rock and Oprah got oh, this big campaign geez. to donate to them. I'm glad and, they and, got and destroyed. Look, I, I am a slack-jawed, truck-driving, redneck asshole, according to Simon. <laughs> but I, I, I'm smart enough to be able to tell you this, that if you are giving The Rock or Oprah any of your money, all they are doing is taking it and writing it off for themselves on their taxes and making it look like they did a great thing. If you really want to support somebody or send your money, find some kind of nonprofit or church that's in yeah. the Maui region or one locally because your money's going to be spent better. Because I'm here to tell you right now, uh, Oprah. Oprah and Rock don't give a rat's 
ass about Oprah's. you or anything you're gonna they are using it to write themselves off i can promise you that if any, they are not they are not good people she's worth 3.5 billion he's worth 1.2 yeah they do not need your money they can sit there and cut off a tenth of their fortune and pretty much build maui back to where it was and not even sweat and they're begging you for their money it's the same it's thing dis- it's despicable it's, it's they, the same they thing. got destroyed though it's the same yeah, thing if I mean. you're going through the damn drive through at, 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 at a dairy queen or a bojangles you're at a Dollar General or Walmart. I don't really go to this place as often, but every time you go in there, would you like to donate 10% to this or this? No. I will donate 10 and, and South Park did a whole episode on this really shame you for it. It's like, <laughs> oh, you don't want to give a dollar to charity? No, I don't mind giving a dollar to charity, but I want to do it on my own cognizance because if I give it to you, you're just going to use it to write off and make yourself look better. Like, I would rather take that dollar and spend it here in town. I'd rather spend it on one of our restaurants, one of my buddies for their beef. I'd rather spend it on a, you know, a, a, a beer at Barrel Chest. I don't want to give it to a corporation that's going to turn around and write a, a write off, a tax, you know, a tax write off donation for yeah. my money. Keep it's not 90, even theirs. Yeah, that keep, way they can take their money and put it somewhere else to make them written. No. Keep 96% of it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's. It's, it's crazy. It's I, I kind of want to talk about the wildfires in Canada. That happened since, yeah, you know, and and you, and while we're on Canada right now, oh, dude, that that's the Nazi thing that happened. Okay, this is unbelievable. Okay. This is unbelievable. Okay, <laughs> now now here's the thing about this, and this is what I love. This this is what I love about this more than anything. Um, the people in Canada, the Parliament, the entire shebang. Oh, standing ovation, clapping, honoring a Nazi, a literal Nazi. And they're honoring him because he fought the Russians in World War II. Okay, if we think back, the Russians were technically on our side during World War II. You know what I mean? Like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And we, yes, were, all, they and we were. were all supposed to be against Hitler at the time, right? I mean, this is not anything new. So we're all supposed to be against Hitler. So this guy who fought for Hitler, but because it's 2020 and people, the 2020s and people are, are out of their freaking minds, this Nazi. And I'm pretty sure that whoever he fought for has been condemned as, as like a like a, a war criminal platoon or company or battalion or whatever it is. Like the entire Canadian Parliament and President and Zelensky and Trudeau are all there. They are clapping and cheering for a Nazi Dude. and he's crying and having his teary eyed moment. So either so one of two things, this is why this is so great. One of two things. <laughs> either they have to admit that they knowingly cheered and rooted on for a Nazi, or they have to openly admit that they do not pay enough attention to know that who they were cheering. So they're so they have to admit they're completely incompetent or that they're rooting for well, a complicit. Nazi. And neither, neither are acceptable to be, to be leading a country. Neither are acceptable to be leading the entire country of Canada. I'm sorry. We we have officially reached clown status in the entire world. <laughs> They cheered on a Nazi, they, Stuart. Come on. They not just cheered him on, dude. Standing We're ovation. talking a three minute standing ovation. We're not just cheering. They're wooing. They're woo. Woo. <laughs> a Nazi sign. It's not just a Nazi. He fought directly for Helmlich Himmler. And oh no. And uh It gets better. And <laughs> you know, Trudeau tried to come out and you know deny that he had anything to do with it, that it was the head of parliament or whatever. Well, then photos came out of Trudeau and the head of parliament meeting with the guy the day before and spending a couple of hours with him chit chatting. Um look, the mask is off. I mean, look, these are it's blatant. Look, it, to feed into another conspiracy theory, I'm a hundred percent that Justin Trudeau is the son of Fidel Castro. So, that, that's been thrown out there quite a go lot. Look at the photos. Just, look at who his supposed dad is, and then look at the photos of him and Castro. They're dead ringers. For I don't other. know if we talked about that on the last show, but one hundred percent. Yeah. Just look. I mean, if you. Look, I mean, look. I am a man. But there's been I, doppelgangers I am, out there throughout history. So. But, but but look, not not only not, not only up. are there dead ringers, but there are also photos out there of Trudeau's mom next with to him, Fidel Castro at the time, and they had a relationship. So the there's time, supporting evidence at the time that he would have been conceived. They were together. Because his dad was allegedly this big, like, commie guy or whatever back in the day. Yeah. So, obviously, they were back and forth down there. And his dad, like him, was probably a big cuck. And he's like, oh, my God, Fidel Castro is going to pound my wife. Boom. Well, we know there comes they're, Trudeau. They're I mean, all... they, they had to make the Canadian. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was good, Billy. <laughs> 
the Canadian government just addressed this recently. That's how crazy the rumor got that they actually had to address it. Yeah. They denied it, obviously, but hey, I mean, who, who's going to believe the government after at this point? If you've listened to this entire show to this point, you're going to continue to believe the government. I mean, he can help you. Dan Ringer. Yeah. Acts just like him. Acts like him. I mean, looks like him. You know, Castro was an actor. He was in several Hollywood movies. Was he really? Before he became hold on, Fidel hold on. Castro. The, the, I, the, okay, 41 years old, I think, at this point in time. Yeah. I know a lot about history. This is the first time I've known Castro was in movies. Yeah, he was in, Go Holly- into this. He was in Hollywood for a little bit. No. He was in like three or four different movies and then played, no. the, played the role of his life as dictator of Cuba. Yeah. For oh real. Just like Zelensky. Yeah, just like him. You can't make this Tell shit you, man, they're, they're all just actors. Just like Trump. Acting on the stage. They're all... I want to look... I, I want to I want to watch a movie with Fidel. Yeah. I mean, Ronald Reagan, he was in films. I mean, he well, was, yeah. Remember? Uh, Back to the Future, Ronald Reagan, the actor? Yeah. I mean, Doc Brown was mesmerized. He's like, yeah. no. <laughs> no. We're like, Trump the Apprentice? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're fired. And that yeah. and, and the 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 thing that made Trump was his worst part of his presidency because he didn't fire couldn't anybody. fire anybody. Yeah, could not fire anybody. Yeah, this whole that yeah, this whole Nazi thing in Canada is just. I mean, I laughed. I've laughed about as hard as I've laughed in a while well, it, when I saw that, and was just like, "You've got to be kidding!" Right? It so it blows just, the, but it, it confirms the, the 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 conspiracy theory of Zelensky well, you look, and Ukraine yeah. being a bunch of Nazis in the first place. Of course, place. they are. I mean, they're on their knees for Zelensky and the Azov Battalion, and we know that they're goose steppers. It's you know what I mean. They are clearly, yeah. and not just like as a, not just like these FBI run the supposed right wing groups that are out there with not brand new Nazi flags that still have the creases in them because they just got them out of the package. (laughs) Not, not fake Nazis like that. These are real deal Nazis, but look, you are the grandchildren of look back before world war two and all of these same power families and, and uh, elite corporations were all the ones supporting and funding Hitler. So it, makes complete sense that they still... how do you think macron's gonna take to the germans goose dipping back up the shots and yeah. he's saying, <laughs> i mean this isn't gonna go down terribly well in nato you know no but but nato's obviously part of the problem yeah a big part of the problem i mean they've been the ones encroaching on the buffer zone that's of, right of eastern europe for the last 30, 40 years. Exactly. So, what I was mean, never supposed to happen has been happening time and yeah. time again. One one line has been crossed and another, and it, and it and hasn't. Now, and now we're saying them to have Putin, I believe, uh, made some statement about uh, nuclear status. And he said one of the one of the red lines would be sending uh, depleted uranium um, tank shells. So what's on its way over to Ukraine now? Depleted uranium tank shells. Well, it's for, just like... What's the, the 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 main battle tank they're the sending Abrams. over? Abrams. The Abrams. Yeah, they just said Abrams so they're, over there. So they're sending they're sending the well, who's gonna... depleted uranium shells for that specific, specific uh, piece yeah. of kit. And who's going to drive those Abrams tanks? These dump nuts from New- Ukraine that look like they just stepped off the you know the bus for their first day of basic training, or is it going to be they're being our special already. operators? I got a feeling it's going to be our special operators. We already know we're dropping dropping them off on the front lines with our aircraft that we're flying. You know, I mean, it, it's it's a mess. It's crazy. Well, and then how many billions of dollars is it now? Are we up in the trillions now of money that we've sent them at this point? I mean, it's we've been be. we've got three hundred fifty be. billion, four hundred billion, this that. I mean, well, our government's like, getting ready to shut down, and right now we're supplying like. Ukraine first responders, fifty two thousand a year. Tie it back and, and when our government does shut down, we will continue to we're fund like Ukrainian. We're buying their farmers seed and fertilizer. But to tie it back to Maui, as part of this this help Maui, you know, funding from the government, they've tied that on with giving Ukraine another twenty five billion dollars. So if we don't give Ukraine another twenty five billion, Maui doesn't get the 
however many hundreds of million it needs. Especially I mean, it's unbelie- interest, this is especially unbelievable. Especially interests and lobbyists behind this. Well, it's what Matt Gates is out there screaming yeah. about right now. He was on Timcast last week. Yeah, he's been on that quite a bit that, lately. And, I like he's Matt ta- and he's like, look, man, you have got to do these single funding bills where this is for this, this is for that, and stop tying this stuff together because that's where all of this waste and pork it's pork well it's pork no, but it's, it's, it's just it's, money laundering at this it's point it's the biggest money laundering scheme it in is. the history of yeah, mankind it is all right I, you know what I, I know we're on a crazy roll right now and i know we're going to be a, get right back on that roll <laughs> but i want to go off on a cons- since, this, since i love having conspiracy theories when sue is on here and one just popped up and we were just talking you know uh, you know about, about how you know the Nazi regime has, has, to some degree, continued on through the years. So, obviously, I, I, I want to know Stewart's opinion first, and then I want to hear what Simon thinks or knows about it. But did did he put a bullet in his head in Berlin that day, or did he make his way to Argentina? I mean, my guess is he made his way to Argentina. I mean, he, it definitely wasn't him in that bunker. Oh, um, from my research, I mean, and, and we just know that in the modern day that those guys don't end up getting killed. They're allowed to go off and live their lives somewhere in peace and quiet for the rest of it. Um, and we know that there was a huge influx of them that went to Argentina. That's where he was spotted time and time again. You had others, you know, very high ranking Nazis that went down there. Um, and my guess is, is that the more that I've learned about it, and it's sad to say, cause both my grandparents, both my grandfathers were, POWs in World War II, and that I think a serious case can be made that we definitely didn't win that war. Now, it's not maybe that the Nazis won, but I don't really believe they lost anymore because what happened was is that, like I said just a little bit ago, most of our elites were funding Hitler. Um, Henry Ford, like you had the Ford, the, you Bush, had the Ford, the, the, way, the Ford Bush factories family. in Germany that were making all of his tanks were not allowed to be bombed. You had the Rockefellers funding him. You had the Carnegies funding him. You had all these elite families that are still around today behind the scenes controlling all this stuff. They've just set up different organizations to do it now instead of their family name on the doorfront. And, and Fonta. So what happened? We absorbed, the, uh, admittedly, so it's probably more than this, we admittedly absorbed 32,000 of them. You know what I mean? Operation Paperclip? Opera- op- yeah, Operation Paperclip, mm-hmm. where the Dulles brothers brought them all back. Um, and you've got that in other areas. Now, there's a there's a guy named Joseph, Dr. Joseph Farrell, who's done a lot of interesting research on this stuff. And he believes that that basically a lot of the things that have gone on in the world over the since World War II has been executed and run by this kind of breakaway Nazi state that was allowed to kind of survive and float around and not be tied to one country and just kind of float above everything else and kind of operate things. Um, and... I tend to think that maybe he's right about that because there's a so a lot of things that you know a lot of these events that happen and everything we can't ever pin it on one place that it happens and it seems like it's very very difficult to put the pin on the donkey it, yeah it is and it, yeah. It, that may be because there is kind of this floating group of you know this kind of well the mega industrialist the is mega what they industrialist were. and and still are. but they definitely have like a Nazi bent to them. And that that so maybe, you know, the end of that war was meant to fool us all into thinking we had defeated this great evil. Meanwhile, that great evil was absorbed in almost every Western nation. And what has happened in all of those nations since then, it's become more and more Nazi like on the government front. As dictatorships. As yeah. dictatorships. But I, go. I think at the end of the day though that <sighs> But if you look at it like that, though, they're completely missing the mark on everything else that, that the Nazis are for. You know what I mean? The Nazis for, like, ethnic. Well, are they? You know what I mean? But, but they may have just changed their tactics somewhat. Because By look, allowing the, because the look, mass immigration. They're, they're, keeping, they're keeping themselves pure. They're not corrupting their thing. And I think that they decided, instead of trying to, like, make this white kind of, 
you know, the way that he was racially doing it, I think they're targeting, targeting us genetically now. And I think that what they're doing is homogenizing the pool so that they're making like this kind of mutt race and eliminating all cultural ties that we've had. Here that comes us COVID together jab. against well, them. You do, know? Do, do you know the, the, the percentage of Americans that were vaccinated at least one time? That was in like, they claim at like 70 something percent, right? I, I think I saw it was 85 percent. 85, yeah. So only 15 percent. And, and, and when I say this That's number. That's actually the golden number. When, when I say this number to people, <laughs> you might think I'm lying. But flip those numbers around, and eighty five percent of the people that I know refused it. Yeah, and that's a weird. You know what I mean? Like the numbers are eighty five percent of the country got it. So, I don't believe that it was eighty five percent though. I do. I don't. I do. I believe at some point in time or another, eighty five percent either got it voluntary or they were forced to do the it worst. to keep their job. Yeah. And so, at least to one. Now, I, I, and the numbers go down per, you know, the second jab that goes down, the yeah. third jab, the booster. Nowadays, nowadays they have Travis Kelsey out there, the big superstar for the NFL, Pat Mahomes boy, like out there doing Pfizer commercials, getting the jab. And now all of a sudden he's dating Taylor Swift, who's, oh, by the way, one of the biggest super. This is this is a conspiracy theory right here. Have you have you kept up with? I mean, this is this is a, I know exactly what this you're is this, about. this this conspiracy is we're talking about up to the minute. Yeah. Conspiracy right here. But Travis Kelsey, one of the biggest football players in the NFL, one of the biggest personalities because he is so flamboyant. But he's a big he's old got white a funny guy. podcast with his brother. But now all of a sudden, you know, he comes out. He's doing Bud Light commercials, which I, <laughs> I think, which I think he was tied into Bud Light before the Dylan Mulvaney stuff, which I think's happened since last time we, we might can go to. But before um, they caught you at straws. That, that that happened back in <laughs> yeah that that was back in April, so yeah. it was before. Um, so you know, but I think he was tied to Bud Light before that. But either way, he's you know he's doing the Bud Light thing. All of a sudden, he's coming out with these Pfizer commercials where he is like getting the vax, I think, in a commercial, right, yep. or something like that. I mean, this is a this yeah. is Pat Mahomes' boy. This is one of the best players in the league. And now all of a sudden, he's tied into Taylor Swift. Now, now, do we believe this is love? Do we believe this is manufactured love? Do we believe this is Pfizer love? What is going? This is up to the minute conspiracies right here. Well, with Stuart I mean, Angel. I don't even know about the. I didn't know he's date Taylor Swift, but I knew about him doing his whole Vax song. And no, dance. this all happened this it's weekend. She how. showed up at the game. Oh, did she? Yes. I mean, it was it's the biggest thing on the internet, right? She huh. showed up at the Chiefs game because there was rumors of them dating, right? And then she shows up. She's in the booth right next to Kelsey's mom, <laughs> and then and then and and. and, and this is beautiful because since he doesn't know about this, this is going to blow his freaking mind. <laughs> so, you know, they do the whole thing. And then afterwards, they're, they're apparently she may have been moved down from the suites upstairs down to the locker room area in a popcorn, like movable thing. Like she a, popped out of the popcorn. She didn't, but to, to get her past a crowd of people, they put her uh, like in a popcorn machine that was mobile. Uh, it was on uh, wheels. I'll have to show you the tweet afterwards. Oh no. So allegedly, that's how she got down there. I, I, I don't know if that's the case or not, but then she got down to the locker room, and they're seen leaving together, okay. him and Travis, her and Travis Kelsey, and then they drive away and it, and it's like this 1960s or 70s convertible where they're both. I mean, it is oh, as, it's a complete setup. It complete is setup. it yeah. is as freaking coordinate. I mean, it is a <laughs> corny and coordinated as you can possibly crafted. Yeah, crafted it's a complete stage show. Show. Yeah, I, I believe that 100. percent I mean, look, you know, all that stuff is completely staged. And look, we learned that like when the Beatles first flew over here, those screaming crowds of girls, they were all paid to be there. At least at Great first. Great PR move. Well, that's Who's what this? they did, yeah. I Who's mean, that? that's what they, the Beatles, when they first flew over from England, you know, to come do Ed Sullivan and go on their U.S. tour in 1964 when they touched down. Look, all of those crowds. This is the car. I mean, that, that's like Greece, right? They, it's like Greece, and they're trying to make you think that, hey. They're normal we, people. You get the vax. Hey, we're normal people. You get we're the just, vax. We're just driving around in the yeah. 67. No, you know. no, man. You like Pfizer. You get the vax. You get the girl. You get the car. That's the story they're selling, you know, and they tie they tie the vaccine with that. That man, this all works out great. It's the American dream, dude. Just listen to Pfizer. All right, go go back to where you were at before I interrupt you with the photo. I just wanted to show that to you. But where were you at? What photo? Of 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 the the convertible. 
Them, them two in the convertible. I oh. just showed you. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I interrupted you. You were in the middle of a thought, and I oh, I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh, we're talking about the Nazis. Yes, World War Two and stuff. <laughs> now we're just going back to Travis Kelsey. Back Nazis. to re- back to reality. Um, no, I think that I think that uh, yeah, you maybe don't call them the Nazis. Call them whatever you want to call them now. But we absorbed all their top talent. I mean, Werner von Braun, you know, launches NASA and fake space for the first 40 years that he's around doing it. Here we go. Um, I, and, uh, I mean, here we go. And uh, I mean, on his own tombstone, he has the Bible verse that, you, oh my, that, I got there's, it pulled up that right there's here. a fervor bit and want, there's nothing up there. I think we talked about this a little bit last I did, time too. But I wanted, I wanted to go right back into this. Psalms 19, one, <laughs> the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Warner Van Braun was a Nazi scientist and he said it would take a rocket the size of the Empire State Building to go to the moon. And that was on his tombstone. So, yeah. so Simon, yes, let's jump into it right now. This is a great segue. Let's tell with the rest of it, flat earth. Oh, it's, let's go right into it. Other, I want to go right into flat earth. I want to go because I don't believe it's you're going to call me crazy. I don't believe that it, that is a globe, it is a round sphere, only because the government tells me so. If the government told me it was a flat earth, I would believe it was a, a, a freaking triangle. I swear on it holy. But they tell me it's a globe, so I'm gonna ha- I'm, I'm, I'm gonna defer. That is what Warner Van Braun, that's what it said. He said the firmament, the dome. Uh, 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 can't get out Babel's tower you know what I mean like biblical we're, we're talking biblical stuff here Babel's you can't get out of it you can't you can't break the dome nope I don't think so I mean why else why else it, <laughs> why, why else in the 1950s do you have Operation Fishbowl <laughs> Operation Fishbowl was what a you, segue and you can look what this, a segue you, you can look this stuff up uh <laughs> operation fishbowl we're going into it simon was them oh, was them nope. shooting all forms of ordnance up including nuclear and trying to break through the dome that's what operation fishbowl because we're in a fishbowl um that's what that was they were shooting all sorts of stuff up there trying to blow through it and never could um and there goes the global warming theory. And, and interesting, <laughs> oh, inter- interestingly enough, we've done this all night. We could tie that into something that's happened in the past three months. We had two countries claim they went to the moon in the past three months. You had, uh, what was it, China and India? India. And India. India. Now, the Chinese rocket or whatever tin can they said they sent up there didn't make it, but the, the Indian one they claimed actually touched down. And if you watch... <laughs> Oh, if no. you watch the video that they gave you for this, it's like watching a Lego move. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Um, meanwhile, they still can't tell you how to get through the Van Allen radiation belt. They can't. I mean, they also the can't tell you thing, who, fu- who filmed them actually landed down on the moon exactly. and when he took his first steps. They were like, here he is taking his first step. Okay, well. Who set up the camera? Yeah. And fake, if he was taking his first steps, who set up the camera? Fake space ties directly in with flat earth because, you know, you start to believe if you start to it, look, if you just do their math, what they tell you is the curvature of the earth. It's uh, I can't remember the exact equation off the top of my head. Maybe I'll look it up in a second, but I think it's something like since it's six inches or six it's feet like per mile or per something like that. It's, it's per mile square. It's supposed to drop. And so look, you know, we were always taught that, oh, you see the boat, it goes over the horizon. The earth's curving and it gets away from you. Well, with modern technology and, you know, any sort of decent camera nowadays. You well, can zoom in you can and zoom see that ship, that whole ship right back there. into view. Um, you've got things like across Lake Michigan. Which you can look across Lake Michigan and see the Chicago Tower. Well, you're not supposed to be able to do that. That's the top of the Chicago Tower should be hundreds of feet below where you can actually see the well, curvature. You, you can see it by their it math. Should be below the by their own math, and there are hundreds and hundreds of examples of this around the world where you can see exponentially farther than they say you should be able to see by their own mathematics. Oh well. So and and of now, course, now Simon's a sailor though, so he sailed the seven seas. Perhaps he knows something. I know nothing on this one, mate. <laughs> I never, I never found the edge. Let's put it that way. 
Well, the edge would be Antarctica. It's, it's a, the ice know. wall that goes all the way around. Oh, well, yeah. I if mean, you look at the UN map, like the map that the UN has, uses, yes, absolutely. that's the flat earth map. It's what it looks like. Yeah. Where north is in the center, south is any direction away from north. And then if you're in the middle, east is one way, west would be the other way. Uh, and that's the UN map. Oh. Now, you've got the Antarctic Treaty, which, you know, we've got all this war. All these countries hate each other. You know, we've got, you know, Russia, Ukraine, us supporting the Ukraine. But somehow we're still in a perfectly gentleman's agreement about what goes on in Antarctica and making sure none of us people get down there to see what's really going on down there. To tie that back into the Nazis, it was much believed yes. that Hitler actually settled part of Antarctica with New Schwabenland is what they called it, and had a breakaway civilization down there that was where they were getting actually a lot of their technology from was because they were in contact with some sort of extraterrestrial race down there. When well, Admiral was, Byrd went down there for just a few weeks, and yeah, he was like... He hightailed it back once he saw saucers flying out of the water and going pole to pole in the blink of an eye which doesn't <laughs> which doesn't negate any of the theories of a dome or anything like that all, all it all it really no they does is just say the dome extends farther no. than we could possibly like uh, beyond our ice wall well, and, or multiple other continents full of lush beautiful well, what is green what does extraterrestrial mean extra is more what is terrestrial land it means there's more land so these ETs, these extraterrestrials, come from the land outside of the little realm we're in on this bigger plane. Now, the only other explanation that it could be a ball is that it's like, you know, 35,000 times bigger than what they say it is. And I believe, I don't know the, the exact number on that, but it would have to be, the ball would have to be exponentially bigger than what they tell us it is for the math to work out right for us to see the things that we're seeing. So either they're lying about how big it is, but then if you start looking at all the other evidence, it that doesn't add up either. It's flat. It's flat like they taught for thousands of years. There's a dome above us. Um, now I do do which, I, which I do believe we have a creator. I do believe that we do live inside a toroidal field, though. Which, if you know what a toroidal field looks like, it does create a sphere that, with the kind of like, uh, you know, the cylinder part in the middle where the energy flows. Because I do believe, look, we're all energetic beings before we're biological, and I think everything here is based off of energy. And I think that's what Tesla was able to tap into and realize and why he was able to do the things that he was able to do. I don't think people understand um, how ex ridiculously intelligent Nikola Tesla was. Like he, I mean, like, he did he not have like the earthquake machine in his hands oh, where yeah. he could he could like yeah. use vibrations to bring down an entire building. Yeah. He had Wi Fi before anybody else yeah, did. Yeah, he invented cell phones in the late eighteen hundreds. I mean, he was sending communications through the air, you know, free energy machines. He 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 had it all figured out. But the problem was is he was funded by the Carnegies. And the Carnegies had just spent in today's day, billions of dollars building the electrical grid system. Who took control of the Tesla papers? Ah, interesting question. <laughs> it was, what, a, what a segue, Simon. What a segue. That would have been, that would have been <laughs> segue. President Trump's uncle, John Trump. Funny that. So when Tesla passed away, he was driven crazy, by the way, and eventually... Well, they say he was. And they also say he married a pigeon. So I mean, so so could we think back and possibly think maybe they were demonizing him because well, look, he was on? I think something? maybe they did, but I also think that what they did to him. Look, if you had the the power and the knowledge to create the things that he created that could have freed the world of all of its ills, and then you have someone come in and squash that away from you. And not let it see the light of day except in little drips where they could take advantage of it. And you're that intelligent to begin with, which being that intelligent means you're right on the edge of being batshit crazy also. Oh, yeah, there's it a does. thin line. There's a very thin, thin line, line there. Genius so my guess is, is that, Kaczynski my guess is they line. did drive him nuts. Um, but when he died, um, 
John Trump, who was a scientist for MIT and worked with the government in other ways, Trump, Donald Trump's uncle was the guy who all of Tesla's stuff was given to for him to go through archive and to divide up into wherever, you know, dark hole compartments it's been sitting ever since then. Well, how does that affect us today? Well, does it's, it? it's kind of interesting that the guy who... It's more dots being joined together, that's for sure. Yeah, the guy who... Um, you know, was president who they, that this evil, evil new world order cabal seems to hate so much and is trying to do everything they possibly can to prevent him from being president again, has that connection. And apparently his Trump's real role model as a kid was not necessarily his father, but it was his uncle John. And he speak, if you go back through all of Trump's different speeches, he references his uncle exponentially more than he references his father fascinating um, that and with the some of the statements that trump has made over the years like yeah i believe we will be able to kick this cancer thing i do believe we will be able to solve these problems and have these solutions well he may be the one that actually knows because as he was sitting on you know uncle john's lap and uncle john was saying well young don you know, one day you're going to be president and this information will be very, you know, useful to you. Now, the question is, will he ever be allowed to really release it or do this or that? I mean, who knows? But at least the possibility is there. What's pinging around my head now is the five month statement. It, yeah, once again, ago. right? That's an interesting one. I'm telling you. So there is another interesting thing. Um, there's a fellow named Cliff High and he is an analytics expert. So he studies language and he uh, developed, this was years ago now, developed a program that analyzes language like online. And so he's pulling stuff from all over the world, this, this program he has. Um, and he's, he's been hired by lots of different corporations to do things and stuff. He's a legitimate guy. Um, he came out and said that his analytics are, predicting that there's going to be something massive that happens around the end of the year, beginning of next year. He can't, can't say exactly what, but he said, based on the language being used, he said that, that everything is kind of building to this point that there's going to be some sort of major event. Well, then you had this group of remote viewers. Now, I don't know if you guys know what remote viewing is, but remote viewing was developed back in the early CIA kind of mind control days. It's been used by multiple governments around the world. Um, and it's basically uh, being able to tap into what you would consider kind of your third eye and being able to kind of see things that are going on somewhere else. It's te telepathy. It's a combination of a lot of different things. Um, some There's been a few famous remote viewers over the years in places like the Stanford Research Institute, um, different government think tanks specifically have been involved in this. They're, they've been used in wars. They've been used to try to like rescue, uh, you know, kidnap victims. And there's been some, you know, a lot of success with a lot of things they've done. Well, there's this, there's this think tank of remote viewers. I forget their exact name, but they were given a, you know, a string of numbers and letters. And then they all sat down and did their remote viewing and apparently, like, if you have if you ha you have a group of people do it, and if you have, like, one remote viewer who, like, comes up with a thing, okay, well, we'll take note of it. If you have two of them that come up with the same thing, you really start to kind of think about it. Well, this group had five people in it. Four of the five all envisioned around the end of the year, beginning of next year, this major event happening. So you've got this group of remote viewers. You've got Cliff High all seeing kind of the same thing going on, that there's going to be something massive that happens. Now, the remote viewers are in their drawings, because what you do is you sit down, you kind of get this meditative state, and then the first things that start coming into your head, you sketch them out. And they were drawing things like people trying to get underground as fast as they could. Fiery objects dro dropping out of the sky. Nope, this isn't, doesn't sound very high, good. <laughs> yeah, high levels of of different radioactive chemicals in the air. Um, basically like a lot of not great things happening. And you've also got Cliff High then doing that. And then you've got Trump coming out and saying 
that in five months this whole mess is going to start to be cleaned up. So it's almost like if this was kind of like a disclosure, open the public's eyes phase, that there's going to be some final act to this movie that we've been watching. That we've been participating in. That we've been participating in almost unwillingly. But there's going to be some sort of big final act that exposes everything and then things get cleaned up afterwards. The question is how destructive is it? How, you know, terrible is it? How many people does it unfortunately wipe out? How many, what, how it comes? Now, both Cliff High and the remote viewers were both saying, look, this event is far enough away that we can consciously change it. So if enough eyeballs are put onto something, events can change. We can make whoever's making these decisions do something different. So, Unless it's a religious event. Well, yeah, because you do have your kind of this day, this time, this place, this has to happen, you know. Just to, just to throw that it's out. It's pretty there. interesting. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know, you know, how much stock I put into it, but when you start hearing Trump make statements like that, you've got the Cliff High remote viewer thing making a lot of news alternatively in the past couple of weeks. You've got well, other people like Edward Dowd, who has analyzed all these statistics from the COVID vaccine and how it's hurting all these people saying that, look, we're reaching critical mass with people waking up to this and there's going to be a reckoning coming well, and that some either event or something's going to happen to try to cover this up. Well, what is it? And, and, and forgive me, I, I can't think of, I can't, uh, source it specifically right off the bat. Maybe you can. There, there's there's somebody out there that they talk about every eighty years. There's a cataclysmic event that happens, and I, and and you can go back. I know Tim Cass, Tim Pool, and them. They they reference this quite a bit. But you there know, is a, an eighty year yeah. cycle. Yeah, you think about you think about seventeen seventy six. You know the revolution. What happened eighty years later? The Civil War. What happened eighty years after that? Like World War II, what's yeah. happening every years after that? We are right in that time in period it. right now that resets everything and that we go through some cataclysmic event that, you know, basically binds the good part of the world together and, 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 you know, we rise from the ashes. You know, it's just, it's so cyclical. It is all this nonsense. You know what I mean? Like, like it, it almost seems like at this point in time, it's, 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 it's almost theater. I, you know what I mean? I mean, it's so crazy. It has to be right. Almost, almost so predictably theater. Hell of a stage. <laughs> yeah. That, that w- w- what can you do about it? <laughs> I mean, everything that's happened. I mean, we've we, we've talked about th- you know, talked about things here. You know, this evening. Just, I mean, uh, what are the explanations? Where's it going? That's a scary one. Well, I mean, and 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 you know, and, and to tie back around, and I said, here's what I wanted to do with tonight's show, and I'm glad, man, we have went off on so many tangents. And that's what I love about the conspiracy <laughs> stuff. You know, we dove into flat Earth here, and look, when it comes to flat Earth, I know what you're going. Don't don't dismiss me. The reason I do not believe in the flat Earth. Or, or no, the reason I don't believe in globe birth is the same reason I didn't believe the COVID narrative. It's because I don't believe in WMDs here after the fact. It's because the government tells me that this is how it is. And what I know is NASA takes an extremely large amount of money every single month to do, to do what they do. Simon has told us, have you heard the story about Simon jumping into the pool? The, oh, the yeah, pool? we heard it last time. It's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> got such a bollocking for it. And I mean, that, that's probably, I mean, like, look, I've seen the videos of the space station. I've seen, th- there was a video that came out within the last year, and it was supposed to be of the space station, and they're overlooking Earth. And all of a sudden, what do you see? Oh, it's just a little mouse running across oh, the screen. That was a great one. On to, I mean, it really, it <laughs> on to, like, how's this, how's this mouth, mouse yeah. surviving in the vacuums of space? You know what I mean? Like, it's these things right here that make me want to question it. Like, don't blame me. Don't call me a lunatic or a conspiracy theorist or a moron. I don't believe in flat earth. You, I just don't believe in globe earth. It's because what the government tells me is because I watched a mouse crawl across the space station no less than a year ago on live video. Don't call me a moron for like questioning <laughs> this. I mean, seriously, right? It's the truth. Right. And how I mean, can you just, have, just, how can you have it. a vacuum against a non vacuum without some sort of barrier in the way? That's one they'll never explain to you. Yeah. Uh, 
or they'll I, give you some roundabout BS that makes no sense and or, just spins these little webs everywhere. And you're like, hey, no, that's or not ha- right. Or half the astronauts say that the stars look beautiful from space and yeah. half of them say you can't see the stars. Or half of them say we made it to the moon and the other half say we can't make it through the Van Allen radiation belt. Or half of them say, I mean, it's just like... Every I, I, I am a I am a semi smart individual. Like I take things into context and I process things. And I'm just I'm watching videos of these people who did these things saying these things, and I'm and I'm trying to piece it together. It doesn't make me a conspiracy theorist. It makes me a critical thinker. It's like, yeah. well, why does their story not add up? Why does it not make sense? Like this is supposed to be the greatest exploration. How can't they get their narrative? To why can't they together? get it together? You know, I it's, you know like, what I mean? Wow. Like, I, I mean, and, which it ties all this thing. I said it was going to come come full circle, and, and when we talk about how things are going today, and where all the funding is going, and how everything, why is it that all this attention is going to Ukraine, and what is happening on our southern border right oh, now? Okay. I mean, is is this a legitimate invasion? I mean, or is is is, is this is this camera trick photography making us think things are worse because i mean i'm I'm trying to be open here because i honestly believe that the summer of love in 2020 i know as bad as it was black lives matter in cities just like i believe there were agent provocateurs in january 6th i believe there were agent provocateurs in all those cities in 2020 that were getting those rats i believe there were people that were protesting that were you know probably genuine i think there was a big population there that was bored and i think there were even provocateurs in the crowd and they got the bored people riled up because the bored people were like well i don't care you know i mean i've been locked in my house for x amount of weeks months whatever i don't care you're gonna throw a brick in the window i'll go in here and steal a couple of nikes or a t-shirt or whatever you know what i mean like like i believe that was as stage as january 6 was I, I think it's all a bunch of horse shit when it's said done, but I mean, yeah, I agree completely. I mean, that whole, the whole summer of love in uh, 2020 where, you know, you got the guy, the CNN reporter saying, oh, these are mostly peaceful riots. Meanwhile, buildings burning behind him. There's complete and utter chaos going on over here. Look, there was a video that, uh, Shepard and Billis and Jason Goodman from crowdsource the truth had where I believe they were in St. Louis and they caught on video, the Antifa people, meeting with the police people, the police people say, okay, these two blocks here destroy everything. Just don't go past this street. You can do it right here. I mean, the whole thing was completely orchestrated and it it was, it was another land grab. Also Catherine Austin Fitz, who's a, you know, a world renowned economist now at this point, she went and looked at all the areas in these cities that were burned down and rioted in and destroyed. And she said, look, these were, this was prime real estate. This was areas of these places that they wanted control of. Just like Maui. And they got it. You know, they got it. What's going on right now? I mean, and they San got Francisco, to- like you're seeing videos of downtown San Francisco, desolate, isolate, like all the businesses the have town. left. There oh, yeah. Nothing- it's just homeless, drug-addled, you know. Zombies. Criminals. So why, yeah, zombies. why, why are we allowing the, the immigrant? Is that legit? Look, I... Is, is immigration that... Is it legit no, or is that it's not legit. trick photography that's going on? Like what I'm saying, oh, are we really oh. being invaded? Yes, we're being invaded. Okay. I fully believe we're being invaded. We're being invaded by male age fighting men. Yeah. So that you're you, not seeing families come over. No, it's not women and children. It's not. And, and guess what? It's not just Mexicans and, uh, you know, one or two other Central American countries. It's thousands of Chinese it's thousands of uh, Middle Easterners. It's North, thousands North, of North, North African. Africans. Yeah. It's thousands by the thousands by the thousands. Okay. And how in the hell are they even getting from there to there where they're go. getting to? Because let me let me tell you right now, if me and Tara, my wife, my beautiful wife, if if we wanted to get together with y'all both right now and say, hey, let's get our families up and, and let's book a trip across the world and go visit, it would cost us thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And we all make decent. You know what I mean? We're not, you know, we're not broke as hell. We're not 1%. We're, I mean, we're, 
But these people are supposed to be economic refugees. How are they making it from African Middle Eastern countries to the U.S. border in the South? Because, they're, because they're funding these NGOs, these non-governmental organizations that are then providing the funding to bring all these people here. And it's clearly being used to help destroy the United States. I mean, it's, it's certainly destabilizing. There's no it's question completely, of that. But and, the fact, then, and then if the shit ever does really hit the fan and things pop off here the way that they could at any time at this point, you have a giant fighting force of men to fight against any sort of American patriots that are trying to save this place. I mean, that's what I think. And I also think that when it comes time, if they have their way, it comes time to come collect the guns. It's going to be these people that are coming across the border that are going to be in charge of doing it. It's not going to be. Because in California, and I think maybe in other state, they have now made it to where illegals can now be members of the police force. Yeah. And, and, and let's not take yeah. away from the fact that there are Chinese police forces operating in like New York City yes. and California that are policing the Chinese neighborhoods. A, a foreign law enforcement agency yeah. operating on American grounds. This is, yeah. this is not conspiracy this is don't think sharia law doesn't do that as well no exactly dearborn michigan sharia yeah. laws but oh you yeah. know what honest, i mean honest to goodness at this point in time hey those michigan I, I people look, i look the freaking muslims of all people are the most based people out there they're the ones showing they're up at ones, all those school board yep, meetings in the, michigan the, and say get off my kids yeah. now or i'm gonna chop your head there. off <laughs> who, who would have Stop seen it. who would have seen 25 <laughs> years ago or 20 years they ago banded together the with muslims white republicans the, the muslims and the christians will yeah. be coming together yeah the irony Fight it's the progressive it? narrative. Yes. It just goes to show you everything we've been sold as a bill of goods because there's a few things that really matter and that people that have any sort of moral aptitude will agree on. You know, it's get off my kids. Oh, but yeah, I fully straight. believe. Look, yesterday you had what I'm assuming is a group of Venezuelans plant a flag in Texas like they're taking the place over. You've got the FBI cutting holes in the razor wire fencing to let them in. I saw a video of Border Patrol today putting a, a ladder up so that they can get over the wall easier. This is a this is a full on allowed invasion that's going on and something something has to give here. You know? That's that's exactly the point. Something has to break. It, 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 well, the interesting thing is, is that you're starting to see in these liberal stronghold sanctuary cities, <laughs> these people now starting to lose their minds because it's on their doorstep. Well, they've been shipped there, rightly so, by Texas. Well, as as they should be. You're damn straight. You're the sanctuary city. Yeah, you want take to, them. You, you want them. You got them. Yeah. Oh, New York just got done saying New York City. Uh, Mayor Eric Adams <laughs> said we we're, we'll be destroyed if we don't. But then again, they also just approved like what one billion dollars to put them up in hotels for the next three years or something. Well, yeah. While they're kicking out. Uh, veterans, veterans, veterans. They're kicking out veterans, and they're kicking out you know African American, like yeah, homeless people right. and stuff like that. And look, a prelude to our show here coming up in the next couple of weeks, we're bringing back on Brian and Darnell Moore. Uh, you know, their local BLM activists. I don't know if they still uh, 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 consider themselves in that. You know, we'll we'll, we'll enough. let them. We'll let them say what <laughs> they are now. But but like, there, there's a lot of questions I want to ask them. You know about what's going on because these immigrants like. They're giving them all these Everything. things and whatnot. You know what I mean? Like they're, I mean, look, we can disagree with Brown and Darnell on what's going on with the black community and stuff like that. But I think we can both agree on the fact that they are completely shitting on the black community with the immigrants right now. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I mean, I mean, like it's just it's it's anti-American as it possibly can be, right? Yeah. Well, that that's the goal, though. You got to destroy the United States of America to get this whole program. On lo in lockstep for well, the rest they, of the world. They, they're that's on what a they're good doing. course. And, and, hey, make sure you ask them about, because the current BLM leader, this Keith okay. Alexander or something, I forget his exact name, he's now standing with all the patriots against this whole J6 narrative. Really? He's been protesting in D.C. because when they started sentencing those Proud Boys a couple of weeks ago and they gave Joe Biggs 17 years and they gave Enrique Ontario 22, 22 years. years. He wasn't even there. He was in a hotel room in Baltimore because he got scooped up by the FBI the day before. Wasn't even in D.C. Yeah, 22 yeah. That man is going to spend two decades yeah, two d in prison yeah. for so text messages. The head of BLM and then a bunch of these, you know, J6 people and stuff 
have gotten together now and are protesting this. They went down to Atlanta and protested the fact that out of the RICO case that they charged Trump with, the only person they threw in jail was the one black guy that they charged, who yep. was the head of blacks for or African Americans for Trump or whatever. And they threw him in, wouldn't give him bail. He's the only one. He Joe, abs- this is yeah, absolutely yeah. true. Yeah, yes. and then he discovered that what they were doing down at this jail down there was locking up all these people on these tiny little petty offenses and then making their bail so high they could not get out. So he got with some other conservative people like Joe Altman, and they raised millions of dollars to go down, and they bailed out like a 100-something people out of this jail one day just to get them all out because it's— and it's like a third world hellhole in these jails now here. I mean, there's cockroaches everywhere. You can't eat the food. It's it's subhuman treatment. And that's beautiful that, that you say that the BLM through. leader right yeah. now is, I that's mean, what he's that's doing. something I want to bring up. They're coming when together. Them on in They're a couple coming weeks. together. And it's interesting, like uh, some of these conservative guys, not conservative Inc., not your Ben Shapiro's and your Charlie Kirk's and these guys, but people like Joel Oatman and some of these other guys, they're actually going out into these african-american impoverished communities now and saying look here's what has been done here is how they're you know keeping keeping you in such a subservient state and they're doing the same thing to us we have to come together here stop that's, letting, that's always stop, been the message that is stop exactly. letting them exactly. divide us it's, like it's this. the division of We're blm the same. That, that was one of my major issues it was and and rightly so at the time that's the case but now i hear this that's very refreshing to it hear. Is. Now I don't know about all you've got all the other chapters and you know. Well, I, but, I, but but I think Simon and I both can can say for Brian and Darnell that that I think they're both genuinely good people. Yeah. I think they 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 care about their community. They care about their family. We might disagree on the way we get to that point in view, but they're not nefarious. And, and and I'm glad that we're going to have them back on here because out because they are candid and we can ask them questions that that most people are afraid to ask. Yeah. You know, that most people are like, well, I can't ask that because you're look, I don't really give a rat's ass. Like I'm, I'm friends with tons of black people. You know, uh, we had John Clements on here. Last, I can ask John anything I want because it doesn't really matter. It's not really about the black perspective or the white perspective or this. It's, it's about the perspective of you as an individual. But I can, we can at least get that from Darnell and Brian. We can at least get them to be genuine and honest. Yeah, candid on this conversation. A, and, and, and I know, Simon, you and I both, we, I mean, we good our teeth at some of their some of their political viewpoints because it just drives us well insane. but they've, they've been fed bad information and, you know and, what I mean? and but we they've think been fed like, bad information well, and and that's what it is it's like, not their fault i think they're great people yeah we think they're misguided and i think they think we're misguided and and that's fine but i want to be able to come to that that common ground and and thank god for them for being able to come to the table and discuss those things but that's because like we spoke about earlier with Mally and things like this, like we're a community and we're in the same community with Brian and Darnell. And we're in the same community with people who might not, you know, see the same as us religiously or politically. But at the end of the day, we we all have to be able to stick together when it starts coming to our doorstep. And it's coming. But if you get soon, if you could just sit down and talk with and have real open, honest conversations the best ideas will win out if they're able well, yeah, to. Yeah, we found a lot of common ground. You know what ground. I mean? And, and, then, and then the more you do that, the more that they'll, you know, people will start to realize that, hey, wait a minute, man, maybe being in this victim class isn't the best thing for us. Maybe, maybe you know, what happened almost, you know, 150 years ago should stay 150 years ago and that things, you know, aren't, aren't that way or that the people we're really upset with isn't the average everyday white man, but these mega corporations and this government apparatus that has used us as a tool to help enslave everyone else now. Well, here's what I want to understand. And this is a thing I want them to understand more than anything. You know, Brian and Darnell, I love them to death, them and, and the people that they speak to, and even the people that we speak to. Look at the January 6th people right now. If you are on one side of the aisle and you look at that and you say, well, they got justice and they got what they deserve as they were facing a jury that came from a pool that was 98 percent Democrat. Then you also have to acknowledge and you also have to acknowledge that all the results 
of the jury trials and the things that happened in the Jim Crow era South were all justified as well because that was 98% of the jury pool. Now, I don't believe that that was the case. I believe that there was a lot of crimes and things that happened in the Jim Crow South that were against black people that were shitty as hell. You know what I mean? Like, like they, they were screwed up against because they were against a jury that was, you know, either 11 or 12 white. Yeah. And I will acknowledge that. But what I want you to acknowledge too, is if somebody like Trump or, or not even Trump, these J sixers just acknowledge that they're not getting a, a fair trial either. They are 98% oh, no, no. Democrat. You, you, I mean, whether it be color versus color or political ideology versus political ideology or religion or versus religion, either you acknowledge it or you don't. And I will sit there and say, Jim Crow South was a lot of bullshit. I guarantee you there were, there were black people who were convicted of crimes that were wrongly convicted just because they were black. And that's because how it is. But I want you to also acknowledge that in 2023, that in Washington, D.C., there are J6ers who are spending 22 and 20 years in prison for nonsense while there are child molesters and rapists and murderers out there spending less time in jail. Acknowledge that. That's what I want. That's well, what it's, I want. Isn't it, isn't it um, alarming that the very the Department of Justice has actually perverted justice to such an extent that it really is uh, it's a perversion? So I don't know how the DOJ gets itself out of that hole because they've actually perverted the justice that they've been looking to serve. Oh, completely. So you know, I don't know where I don't know where that uh, establishment goes from here because they're in a hole a and time. a very very deep one. Well, you had uh, the senator from Indiana the other day. I don't know her name, but she was a refugee as a kid from, I believe, from Russia. And she was just screaming at Merrick Garland about how you're turning this into a communist state. And I've lived in one and I know what it looks like. And this is what, you know, government Wait. law enforcement does in a communist state. Oh, we're there. And uh, we're there. But look, I mean, all these people have to look at, you know, you talk, you talk about the Jim Crow era and everything else. Our current president was out there as one of the lead authors in trumpeting the crime bill from the early 90s that has locked up so many African Americans in this country for having, having to, a tiny rock of crack in their pocket and they're spending 40 years in jail for it. Well, his meanwhile, son, meanwhile, you have an eight ball of regular Coke in your pocket, which is a white man's drug or was then, and it was a slap on the wrist. And this is the same, you know, the same people. And well, the same somehow guy who they're... said he didn't want his kids going to a racial jungle when it talked about integrating the school system. The same guy, who, the called, the same guy who called LL Cool J boy the yeah, other day. I just, I nearly <laughs> fell in the hole. I thought, did he really say that? Yeah, he did. He, did. he called LL Cool J boy. I mean, yeah. what an ass. <laughs> I'm so I've called that out for what it is. What an ass. I mean, we also need to be honest though. Biden is not in control of anything. He's not in control of his own bowel system. So how is he, he in, in control punch. of any government or anything else when he's crapping himself in front of the Pope, farting in front of the Queen of England? I mean Really? It's you know, the guy clearly and look, I that wife of his is the devil for marching him out there. He should be sitting in front of a TV, drooling his pudding out of his mouth every day. It like, happens, any, like any ice old. Cream. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he, like he likes, Simon's going to be ice about cream seven and, years. Ice yes. cream and sniffing little boys and girls. <laughs> there we go. I would not let that happen to you. Thank you, I Billy. I would not let that happen no, to you. No, don't. I will take you out of your Please misery. do. I will. I promise. I mean, we have Just a, make it quick. We have a president that openly sniffs little kids and gropes them on te on TV, you know. Um and it's it's a sign of where we're at, man. It's a sign of where we're at. It's uh it's really something. I don't, that yeah, we I, we've fallen this far. So but that's low. the point. It's I'm a, going it's a, lower by the it's day. It's a giant humiliation ritual to get rid of the United States as it has stood as the bastion of freedom for the past 200 and some years in this world. Almost 300. Oh, I'm going to have a so, great night's sleep this evening. Thank but you, that's, Stuart. But I, but I also think, look, I was, I've, been, I've been digging in a lot to like election stuff and how these elections actually function and how they're able to steal these elections and put the people in place that they want. And if you 
have an actual fair and legitimate election and a fair polling of what's going on, our viewpoint polls at about 68%. So we're really, you know, about seven to three. We really are speaking to the masses. We, we really are. And it's just a lot of people have been too scared to, to stand up and say it. They've, they've been intimidated by this minority of people but because that minority controls the media apparatus and controls the censorship apparatus, and large, you're and made you're emails. made you're made yeah. to believe that it's this mammoth thing that's coming at you, and you have no chance of stopping it. Meanwhile, it's like a little ant on the floor coming towards you. It, but Crapping they just, his pants. But they're able to like have <laughs> this. Pro- yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drooling on himself and saying all sorts of gobbledygook every day <laughs> but it, it's i mean it, he said that he was uh what was it the other day that he had been a uh, senator for 800 and something years or something I mean, does he think he's moses or something i mean he's just he's he's completely mush and i mean i think a lot of times they're marching somebody out there who isn't the real Joe Biden. Like, if you look at the ears, some of the ears look at and the, the, the earlobes. Yeah, and all we that. know they've used doubles and triples. And the new Fetterman, the new Fetterman looks nothing like the old Fetterman. I saw a meme the other day that had six different Fettermans in it, and they all look different. They're it's all different bizarre. Fettermans. And the scary thought is <sighs> Kamala's next in line. <laughs> Miss Cackle. <gasps> I mean, the options are. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, what Montel Montel Williams side piece is the vice president. Good lord, Willie Brown's ragdoll is the vice president. Let's give us strength. I mean, look, I I fully believe that. Look, I think you're either going to see Gavin Newsom or uh or Michael Obama as the actual candidate for next year. Do you were going to say? I don't. That. I I just I don't see. I think I think that you're actually starting to see the media start to humiliate, humiliate Biden. Like CNN ran a piece a week ago where they highlighted all the things that he's lied about, like where he's been and what he's done over the years, that he wasn't, you know, down there with Nelson Mandela on the street, that he wasn't uh, at ground zero the day after it happened, that he wasn't, you know, that all these lies he's told. They're they're starting. Now they're, they're pushing They're out. never going to un highlight all of the actual corruption and grift that has been going on. They will still deny that to the end, but they're pushing him out of the way. And I'm telling you, man, it's either Newsom or Michael. It's one of the two. And by the way, for those listening, Michael Obama is Michelle Obama. That is not a woman. All right. Real quick. I I want to get out of here. And I know we need to get out of here. And (laughs) let me preface this by saying real quick, Heather, I love you. And I know Simon has tapped into his watch about two times in the last 10 minutes. But before we get off of this show, that came out in the last few months, too. The big Tucker Carlson interview. What is it? The Sinclair guy. Larry, Larry Sinclair. Larry Sinclair had gay sex with Obama. They smoked crack. How, what can we take from this? Is it true? I think it's 100% true. I, I This is the first time Larry Sinclair's came out. He came out in 2007 and did an appearance at the National Press Club where he detailed the same story. Um, and if you know anything about like people telling stories and what to look for and lies and stuff, he, he, he didn't repeat the story word for word, but he repeated it in the same way with the same general terms. Um, no you know, ear scratching or nose no, picking. No, I mean, just no eyes just looking to the on. left. And you know that, uh, I mean, look, this whole narrative that's been built up around this Obama character is complete and utter nonsense. He's been a CIA Manchurian candidate since the beginning, um, and <laughs> and I fully I fully Simon, believe that Simon was there, he I fully believe that he uh, that he, he is gay. He's him and Michelle who and that's is, fine. Who cares? No, I I, could, I don't yeah. care. Michael Michael Obama, as it's known now, is, as he has alluded he, to multiple times. Oh yeah, he's called it Michael he in multiple him, multiple, and, well, multiple speeches. This is not and, us saying and this. And who messes is, that up? 
I have never. I would, I've never called my wife Timmy. I've de- me neither. Or, or, or our wives you know, have the Trevor. same name. I've yeah. never done it either. Anything with a T. I've, I've, I've called <laughs> the only thing I've ever called my wife is my daughter's name <laughs> because she reminds me. Of, they both drive me the same amount of crazy. But that, that's yeah. understandable. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. And it's happened, wife and daughter. It's happened time and I time not, again. I've never called her. A ma- have you ever called your wife? Oh uh, no. What's what's it? What's a uh, uh, name? It starts with an H. It's a guy's name. I mean, uh, Henry. Henry. Uh, Henry. Have you ever called? Have you That's called my Henry? godson. <laughs> You've never done it. You've yeah. never, and he's done it multiple times. Oh, he it's like six, It's a bunch of times, and I mean, go watch any of the videos of his his private parts swinging around in oh, those yeah. in those lady pants that he's wearing. Um, well, I know Simon and, pays attention to those videos his quite name, a bit. His name was Michael. He's got them downloaded, actually. His name was Michael Robinson. And uh, from my research, he actually played a year of college football at Oregon State before he left school and started becoming a woman. Didn't, didn't her brother coach Oregon State basketball? Yeah, he's been a basketball coach. Well, Oregon State. That's, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's, it's, look, and then you've got Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers came out and told us all what the deal was, that we've already had our first gay president. It's Obama. We've already had our first transsexual or transgender, whatever word she used. It's Michelle. Michelle's a man. She said it. Two weeks later, she was dead. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. We've seen the videos. Yeah, it's, they're, it's, they're, and, and and we're gonna bring this up, see Brian and Darnell. If y'all listen, and we're bringing this up next week, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to bring it up. But we also, up you also Obama's had the, junk. then you also we're had the, the Obama chef wind up dead. That's somehow, another conspiracy for the past six months. Somehow, that you've been yeah, somehow months. wind up dead. In like, in, in like four foot of water. Yeah, four foot of water with no he was a with prof- no with no clothes on, by the way. And he it's was come a out prolific now. swimmer. Yeah, prolific swimmer, prolific no swimmer. clothes on. Then you had Obama on the golf course the next day looking like OJ with bandages all over his hands. Well we Those can't we, I mean look, out. look, we I, so, look, look, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm that's too much for me. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna believe for a second he had anything to do with the physical altercation. <laughs> I would not believe that because he is a uh, who knows though, you know if because look it it has come out now. Well, maybe that, he knew he could get away with it. And that's it. the thing. These people are into all sorts of dark, depraved stuff. You know what I mean? So, but it did come out that, and this is a fact that the the guy who died, the chef, had signed a book deal with a book publisher to write a tell all about his time working for the Obamas. He had been their chef for years and years and years. Where is it? Okay. Well, I don't know. That's the thing. The next show, and I think at this point in time, we're going to have Stuart back at least four times a year. I think once every three months, because the conspiracies are coming so fast. I can't keep up with them. Yeah, I can't either. As as long as they continue to come as fast as they are, we can't (laughs) avoid not having him on about once. Stuart, also, you need need to get a a next page, and you need to keep up to date on it, because we will feed you people left and right with your, I mean, our, our at get on tap, please. If you're listening to this, go sign up for Twitter. Sign up, X is what it is now. Look, it's not the end all be all of free speech, but it's a whole hell of a lot better it's than better Facebook than and else. Instagram. It really is. We've got Simon on there now. We're working towards getting him on some spaces. I think here in the next two weeks, we're going to do our spaces. I'll, with get, I'll get on there, join up with the crew. Join up on this because look, in the next yeah. couple of weeks, we're going to do our spaces with our buddy at Appalachistani. Uh, you know, Spike COVID. I want to do a state of Appalachia and I want everybody to jump in, get on there, make one because we will send people for your conspiracies your way because they make, they make a lot of sense. They do. And I'm super excited about next week. I'm, I'm really excited about continuing this conversation. Maybe not uh, from, from more of a conspiratorial point to more of a literal point though with, with Brian and, and Darnell. I'm really excited uh, they have a show out. If you have, you know, Apple, Spotify, whatever, it's called Misunderstood. Uh, I don't know how easy it is to find. I found it easy because I know who they are and what they look like, and I saw the picture. But if you don't look, go follow them, listen to some of their shows. Um, like I've said before, it drives me freaking crazy. Sometimes I'm listening to their <laughs> stuff and I'm screaming. Yeah. I'm screaming at the radio. Hey, I'm like, right, I don't know, but, but it's good to hear what they have to but say. I, I appreciate their perspective and, and it's good that they put it out there. You should put it out there. Put it out there. Let everybody know. That way we can have 
context. That way we can sit there and have these discussions because I, I, what my ultimate goal with Brian and Darnell is, I think they are incredibly intelligent people. My ultimate goal is for them to open their eyes and see that the government no it's matter, not the same, it, yeah. it, it, it doesn't care about them. No. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Left, right. It doesn't care. I agree with you. The right doesn't care about you. And I understand that viewpoint, but guess what? The left doesn't either. No. Just, just come to look, we have an ability and we really, if, if anything in the past, you know, year or two has shown us, we really need to stick together as a community, black, white, Christian, freaking Muslim. Athe- it does not matter. If you live in this part of Appalachia, you better start sticking around. You better yeah. start knowing your neighbors, yep. start figuring out who is who, because it, it, there's nothing to say that all of a sudden, Five months down the road, we won't hear, oh, well, what's the new hotel coming in in Rocky Mount? The Hampton Inn? There's a Hampton Inn coming? Right above uh, KFC, yes. I think it's a Hampton, yeah. yes. Oh. oh, this is a whole new thing. We've, we've... We'll see about that. Anyway, but who's to say it might not be? Well, they're all of a sudden full capacity for immigrants. And all of a sudden Could they're be. here, and now they're migrating around their... You know, they're bored and they're making their way around Tank Hill, you know, around that part of the county. And they're, they're causing like, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying don't be surprised. It's starting to happen. Well, if, if, if somebody comes in and says, well, hey, we'll give you X amount of dollars to to put these people That's in your right. home. What are you yeah. going to say? Are you going to say no? And they pay well. No, they're going to pay they above pay really market well. value. The government is going to pay them. All, and, and all of a sudden, we've got 300 immigrants in Rocky Mount. Yeah. Now. On the surface, 300 doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider the population of Rocky Mountain is 5,800, you're talking about a significant percentage. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and, and who knows if, if they can vote at some point in time? Who knows if they're going to be going around causing problems? Well, and I don't want them, I don't want people coming into this community there's, causing problems. I don't care your race. I don't care your religion. Don't come in here and cause problems. Like I, I want to support the black businesses as much as I do the 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 Asian businesses as much as I want to do the Hispanic businesses. Like like I don't want people coming in here. Call, but this is a reality. This could happen, right? Oh, very much so. Because look at the existing occupancy of the hotels that are around eighty percent. These aren't eighty percent of visiting um, tourists. These are local folks in there that are making up that statistic. For, for whatever reason, folks or, or or for whatever va- reason, or vagrants that are getting government handouts yep. that are that are being paid to stay in that neck. Plus, you also have some of the um, pipeline people, probably you know, they're taking up a, a, a minuscule amount of it. I mean, there's, but as you said, we, I mean, eighty percent is being taken up, and it's a lot of it is long term. It's yeah. not. It's not. Hey, we're stopping in here and hanging out in Franklin County and spending our money here and doing this and this. It is people who are here for the long term. And I mean, yes, they are spending their money, but they're probably getting bologna sandwiches and stuff from Food Line. They're not. They're not coming in and touring. You know right. what I mean? They're not touring. Uh, so, so who's to say? You know, this is happening in a lot of communities around the country. And what happens when it comes to this community? You know what I mean? Like, like I don't. And Sam and I both, we don't agree with a lot of the things that, you know, you know, Brian and Darnell, you know, believe in. But I think at the end of the day, we both agree that this community is very important to all of us. And we should all have a say so in what happens. And if we don't jump on the ball right now, we're going to be behind it. And then we're we're already 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 behind it. And then what? And then what? I mean, we're already behind it. We've Yes. So we have to make sure. I mean, we're in this together. And and I want this to be the thesis, not just for us. I know a lot of people listen to this show that are from here. And I know a lot of people listen to this show that aren't from here. We've got a massive, you know, audience all across the country that listen to us on Twitter for two reasons. One, we have great guests, but two, they kind of want to tune in for the ins and outs of what's going on locally. It's almost like a, a, a soap opera. You know, Rocky Mountain has become their soap opera because of, because of how Simon and I have portrayed things over the past year. So I want them to understand as well, to take this back to their community. Look, go find the people in your community. And I don't care how much you disagree politically, try and find a way to find common ground because no matter how bad you think it is between you two, it's about to get a lot worse when they start convoying in people from other countries that don't give a rat's ass about anything close like like you like i mean we might be you know 10 percent apart from the blm in this town when you bring in immigrants we're talking about 60 percent apart like i don't care about 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 
olive branches and and helping people out that really need it and things like this. But if if, if things are going in the direction that they that appear to be going, we're being invaded, and it's not by people that have good interests. They're not coming well, here. I don't think they necessarily have good intentions because it's clearly a migration that's been concocted. This is this is by design. So we need to there, team up. Therein lies, need to therein team lies up. the problem. Yes, we need to team up. Um, I think he's going to... I'm going to stick this around. I'm, I'm not going to stop recording. I think he's going to find out quick that there's not a bathroom right there to use because they're taking baths. <laughs> they're taking baths. Yeah, where we are, we're, we're going to wrap this up as soon as he gets back up here. Um, so let's do, let's, let's do this right now to, to go ahead and wrap it up because I know Simon's got to get out of here. And, and God bless you, Heather. And God bless you, Simon, for being a part of this. Look, look, this past we're making weekend, a change. This past weekend, at, at, per usual, you know, I love going up to the wood shop. I love hanging out with with Amos, and I love uh, rashing across ideas with him because he gives me the proper feedback that I need. And and honest to goodness, this show would not be where it's at without Simon and Heather for appreciating and putting up with you coming here once a week and putting up with this nonsense. And it's a pleasure, Billy. Well, I Go know, on. and 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 I know it. it it's kind it, of a hobby it's with great and it's, and it's kind of ridiculous at this point in time but at the same time like i think our both our wives need to understand that we have come to a point where it's it's bigger than us you know what i mean it's definitely it, it, there isn't it? it is bigger than yeah. us like like yeah. at this point in time whether we like it or not whether we believe it or not or whether we want to take on the responsibility or not we are reaching we're a lot of people yeah. and a lot of people are turning to us and trying to find ways to deal. They're trying to find direction. They're trying to find places they can go to find out where they can get good meat, where they can get good produce, where they can get good ideas. And we have a responsibility at this point in time. And, and I know, I know it's, it's, it's hard on the surface level. It is so hard. And I even know for you, Stuart here tonight, it's hard for you to look at your wife and be like, what we're doing here tonight really matters because on the surface level, it's like, God, we got so much else to do right now. We got this with the child. We got this going on. We got these bills to pay. We really don't have it. And that's understandable. That's why I love our wives for being able to put up with this kind of shit. But I truly believe in my heart of hearts well, that what we are doing right here today will resonate far and beyond what we can imagine. Well, it does. And, like my wife is the good example of this. She used to not pay attention to any of this stuff. And, but now, she, especially since we've had our son, who's the same age as your oldest daughter, um, she's really started coming around on the fact that, wait a minute, all this stuff that's going on directly affects our lives. And, you know, right now we're in the process of building a house that we're trying to get done. And I've made a commitment and she fully supports it that once I'm done doing that, I'm going to become very active locally around here. I'm going to be at all these meetings and going, That's to, what them we need. Consi- going to them consistently. That's what we need. I'm going to start. Um, I've had the idea to really start you know, digging in even deeper, especially into like the Virginia election system and figuring out how it really works so that we can get it back to actual free and fair elections. Because if your vote doesn't actually count, then what are we doing here? Mm-hmm. How can we actually change anything? Um, and We're it's all beca- out. becoming active, starting my own podcast like you guys have, and partnering up with people like you and other people in the area, and helping promote each other to get the word out. Because it's this. This isn't just about us. It's about our kids now, and then their kids that they're going to have, and leaving this place in a better place than especially what it is today, but even what it was when we were kids. Well, we, better, you know what I mean? we, we better start shifting our agenda really quick into building people who are ready to stand up and fight. Yeah. Because it's not going to be an easy fight. No, because it's, it's not. getting tougher and tougher. And if you're going to be able to stand up against the things that are coming our way, we better be producing some strong headstrong kids yeah you know what i mean you better start doing well, that but, and, i know we're doing a good job we've got to do all the prep work now for when they become young adults that they're able to continue this on and have it in a place critical that, thinkers that, that they can operate from that's all yeah, we need get them out of public school number one yeah and you know teach them the trivia method 
And, and if you do, if you have, about. if you have to look, and we know if you have to send your kids to public school, because we know it's difficult because the system pits you to the point to where you have to, do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. difficult. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. You have to be it's blessed and commitment. lucky to not send your kids. Public. But if you have to, at the end of every single day, you take your child and you like, like desensitize them. You ask yeah. them what they learned and then you teach them the right way. You teach them, the, you know, God's way. You teach them the morals that we need to survive as a civilization, mm -hmm. because we're going to have to implement that all here in Franklin County between us, between Brian and Darnell, between the crazies, between the loons, Everybody that loves this part of the world, we're going to have to team together here very soon. Yeah. Like, we're going to have to find a way. So, your children is the best avenue to start off with. Um, Look, we're two and a half hours into this. I think we've had one hell of a time. Like I love, it's been fun. I love this. I love this, and I know Simon does Little too. Purple like, smoke. I know Simon. Like I love, I love these shows. I love, I love being able to get down and talk about this, and I love that this show is going to segue into our show. Hopefully next week with Brian and Darnell, and I, I want people to take that very seriously as well. Look, they're representing a different part of the community. We need to, as much as we disagree with them politically trying and understand where they're coming from the more that ground. way we can yeah. because at the end of the day look they're our allies because what's coming down the pipe is a whole lot more evil and despicable than we yeah. can all comprehend and we better be on the same freaking page we better be on the same freaking page because i mean it may Maybe we're wrong. Maybe everything that's being portrayed to us right now is all optics and is getting us to get riled up for no specific reason. I don't know, but I would prefer to be prepared and be on the same page just in case, because we've got a beautiful part of Appalachia right here that we need to protect. Yep. I agree. Let's make that happen. Thanks for having me. No, I thank, appreciate I it. I love it. I think it we fun. need to have you in here. And I think <laughs> the next time we have you in here in, in probably three months, we should probably bring smoke of the Appalachia standing oh, back on here sure. too and make it one hell of a show we get amos on here we've got a lot of good stuff coming up here in the future i think simon and i along with uh chip slate being libertarian go follow them on facebook twitter instagram they're a, a massive page working in with them we're going to be in, in dc hopefully in february working on this kind of stuff maybe me and simon here in the near future are going to be heading out to california to try and spread the message so every little bit helps if you go to patreon.com slash get on tap for three dollars a month minimum or you can give more you know uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. I, I keep saying it, and I, I'm not Small lying steps, to you. I'm not lying to you. I just might not be telling you. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, we, we're we going to get these spaces in here. We're going to get more uh, subscriber-only content. But in the meantime, you're, you're supporting us, and we're taking that money, and we're putting it back into to good things that are going to help this area. We've got Spike and his old entire crew wanting to come here and do a retreat here this fall. That's because the things we've done on the show, and that's because of the support that everybody in this and like community the community has given gave us. it to us. They have. They Everyone. Have. And they're going to come back here. They're going to spend a lot of money going to our restaurants. They're going to spend a lot of money on Airbnbs. And they're not going to be the only ones. We have we have shown this time and time again. Everything you do, we're putting back into the community. So you can find us there or at Venmo or Cash App, back on tap, $5, $10, $1. It doesn't matter. We put it back in our community. Like what we got here is beautiful and we're trying to push it. And uh, we love everybody that, that supports us. And thank you so very much. And thank you, Stuart, for coming on here. We have a blast with these conspiracy shows. And I Thanks know, for messing up my sleep tonight. And I know it, 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 it peaks time of just too. And I know this is great. And thank you, Heather, so much for putting up with our nonsense. And Tara. Don't and you Tara, mean Henry? Tara and Tara are... are <laughs> our wives for all this kind of stuff. And for everybody else that helps us out, patreon.com slash get on tap one more time, support us. We're doing great things. We're going to continue to do great things by you. And look, we got to stick together. I can't wait for next week's show. Simon, I'm so excited about sitting down with Brian and Darnell again and hashing out some things. It's always a great conversation. It really does. I mean, we, we've done it three times. Only one time has been recorded, unfortunately, but uh, I'm so looking forward to it. Y'all tune in next week. Catch us at, at Get On Tap on Twitter. That's the place where you're really going to find all the engagement at. And you can find Simon at Simon On Tap on Twitter as well. He's starting to be more active over there. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. And, um, be patient uh, with me, though. I'm, I'm trying. There's Shadow Bennett's <laughs> over there, but we're there. So for Stuart, Simon, thank you so very much. I want to do this again in a few months. Sounds Take good. Care. Right on. Boom.
we can step tying everything back into the shit that's happened since. Ashes to ashes And you know it's dust 
Cause I'm sitting 